passes and yards. And from Tuscola, Texas, decorated Longhorn quarterback Colt McCoy making his second NFL start today, all serving as part of our backdrop here in the Big Easy. Hi, everyone, <laughs> along with former NFL defensive back Solomon Wilcox, Kevin Harlan, and thank you so much for joining us. This hasn't been the same Saints team that began last season, 13-0, and Solomon lit up the scoreboard wherever they played. But they are coming off their most complete game with the win last week over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, led by their quarterback, Drew Brees. And Drew Brees is a supremely confident quarterback. He plays with an aggressive style that's a mirror image to the play calling of his head coach, Sean Payton. Since he's come to New Orleans in 2006, no quarterback has played better. None has more passing yards. No one has a better completion percentage. And he's only one touchdown pass behind Peyton Manning. And he is an equal opportunity quarterback. He's going to spread it around to eight different players. And he plans to launch a very aggressive and fast attack. He wants to get off to a great start in this game today. There is late news from the Saints. They're going to welcome back their safety, Darren Sharper, who's been out for the first six weeks of the season with a knee injury. He won't start, but he will play. You know, the Saints have found it, like a lot of champions do, difficult to repeat. A lot of things now, obstacles in their way. They're four and two coming in. They've had to win in different ways this season than last. And I can give you three reasons why their winning formula has undergone change because they have lost the presence of Pierre Thomas, a powerful physical presence as an inside runner. And how about the loss of that ultimate weapon that is Reggie Bush? You lose a playmaker on the back of your defense like Darren Sharper. Turnovers go down. So games have been closer and they had to find a different way to win a ball game. Now from the Cleveland Browns coming in one and five. They welcome back a, a guy who had a vicious hit given to him last week by James Harrison of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Josh Krebs, their jack of all trades, is back. He will play, which is good news for young quarterback Colt McCoy. Yeah, Colt McCoy's all eyes will be on him in his second career NFL start here against the defending Super Bowl champion. Last week against Pittsburgh, well, he got better as the game went along. Watch his vision. It's on the pass rush, not downfield. He doesn't see a wide receiver who's wide open, so he runs himself into trouble. But later in the game, in the same situation, vision down the field against pressure, and then he's able to see the open receiver on cover the tight end in the end zone for a touchdown. You love the way his game improved. He's going to be in the spotlight today. We'll see how he can continue that maturity. Browns told us last night they feel they've got to run the ball to survive here in the Dome. Absolutely, and it all falls on the shoulder of Peyton Hillis. He got off to a good start to the season. Back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing performances in week two and three. And then week four and five, he had a combined 69-yard rushing over the last two games. So he's got big numbers, but he's got to come up big here today. And now today's Tools of Victory brought to us by the Home Depot. Well, the Cleveland talented tight ends of Benjamin Watson. He leads the team in receiving. And then the athletic Evan Moore. He has to really be a weapon for the young Hope McCoy. And then for the Saints, their well-anchored run defense must first stop Peyton Hill before they can rush the quarterback. As for our Home Depot keys to the game, the Browns' defense must create turnovers, but how about Drew Brees? Drew Brees has to spread the ball around in the passing game. And for more Home Depot player stats, log on to CBSSports.com. Brees and Colston, Eric Mangini, the coach of the Browns, and Colt McCoy were back to New Orleans after this. season as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns and last season's NFL coach of the year is Sean Payton. Our broadcast today is brought to you in Sony High Definition and our kickoff is next on CBS. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Some of the important and actives for today's game 
Steelers starting quarterback quarter is out, as is Jabari Greer. Shanley, the linebacker, is gone with the hamstring. Massaqua still suffering from the concussion of last week. Right tackle John St. Clair is out for the Cleveland Browns. The Saints won the flip of the coin. They will receive. You take a look at Phil Dawson, who last week kicked his 235th field goal, breaking Luke Groza's Browns record. Courtney Roby is deep back for the New Orleans Saints. We're indoors, a little rainy outside, perfect inside. We're glad you've joined us here in the Big Easy with Solomon Wilcox, Kevin Harlan, and away we go. And Roby will have to take this about six yards out of the end zone, and he'll leave it right there. So it'll be first down and ten with the touchback to the 20-yard line with our first look at quarterback Drew Brees. Boy, he looked good in practice on Friday. He leads the NFL with a 70.6% completion percentage. And for Drew Brees, what did he say? When I get into the games, I don't think. I simply read and react. He had a good week of practice, so that doesn't spell for a good story for the Cleveland Browns. He wants to get off to a quick and fast start. Now, they script their first 15 plays of the game. Absolutely. An uh, aggressive play caller in Sean Payton and an aggressive trigger man in Drew Brees. I three in the backfield, first down and 10. Out of bounds, looking for Colston. And the coverage by Eric Wright. He has certainly been under the microscope in the defensive secondary for the Browns. They got pro bowlers dotting the offensive line, but the emerging star is their left guard out of Nebraska, Carl Nix. One to watch today and all season long. Chris Ivory is the one uh, from Tiffin. A rookie free agent, 158 yards on the ground last week. It's second down and 10. That's on the money to work on the rookie, T.J. Ward. That's caught by Colston. Now they'll spot the ball at about the 33-yard line. That's good for a first down, a pickup of 11. And watch the coverage. They'll pass it off to T.J. Ward. Good coverage, but watch the throw. You're talking about throwing away from the pressure of the defensive back where only your guy can get it. That's laser pinpoint accuracy from Drew Brees. It is first and 10. Betts was in the backfield. Complete looking for Devery Henderson. Ibram Elam was covering. Now let's take a look at the line. Schiefering is in. Robert Smith is out for the season. Had a back injury last week against Pittsburgh. Solid linebackers, including Fujita, who has played for the New Orleans Saints, won that Super Bowl ring a year ago and gives a great deal of texture to the Cleveland Browns organization. They love having him. And Eric Wright gave up two touchdown passes last week to Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. He has been under the microscope. We'll watch him today. Second down and ten. A look at Fujita. Ivory. Exactly the discipline. There is Fujita with no gain on the play. With a good defensive tackle there. Fujita knows that this New Orleans Saints offense wants to get off to a fast start because they love scoring on the opening drive. In six games so far this year, they've scored on five of those opening possessions you can see the points they've been able to put on the board are the most in the national football league in the first quarter yeah fast start is what they do with the new orleans Saints. a little disheartening now when you get uh, beat on that early in the game oh, absolutely rob ryan knows he can get a stop right here goes a long way into helping his team try to win a ball game three with pets in the backfield the nickel secondary for two Intercepted by Elam. Right there, nonetheless, they dialed up the right defensive play. A frustrated breeze will leave. They'll have to punt the Saints will on their first possession. And Meacham has to get across the face, coming from the right side of your screen. Has to get across the face of the defensive back. But Sheldon Brown keeps him from getting there, and that allows Abram Elam to get to the point of intercept. Now, dropping that interception, that's equivalent to dropping a big play on offense. Boy, you could get that interception get great field position for your offense. Morstead to punt. Cribs is deep back. This is one of the top three punters in the National Football League. Back to the 12. Back to the 4 3. And they throw it outside. This is right with an entourage. Great throw by the former college quarterback, Cribs. And there goes right down the sideline. All the way to the 19 of New Orleans. How about that for Razzle Dazzle on a 55 yard punt? and a 69-yard return. Wow, that was just a wonderful play, and sometimes you have to do some things outside the box just to try to manufacture some plays. Joshua Cribs on the throwback. He draws your attention, rightfully so, as good as he is on special teams, but he is a former quarterback, flips it back to right. Now watch Eric Barton. 
Number 50. Look how he works his way through there to try to get the trip up. That was just a wonderful play. Excuse me, that was Marvin Mitchell, linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. First and ten for young Colt McCoy at the 19. Flag. Stop it. Benjamin Watson caught the ball and Clark had a beat on him. Ball start, 73. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's the three-time Pro Bowl left tackle. Joe Thomas on the line for Cleveland. So here's a look at Colt McCoy. Almost 70% completion percentage last week against that very good Steeler D. Uh, that's saying something to be able to do that on the road against Pittsburgh Steelers defense, who I think is the best blitzing defense in the National Football League. That shows you something about Colt McCoy. Now he's got to come into this very loud New Orleans Superdome and maintain his poise and composure. On first and 15. On the money. Across the way, that's Chancey Stuckey who works on Malcolm Jenkins, a 13-yard pickup. Like last week, he completes his first pass against Pittsburgh, down to the 11. Accuracy is not a problem for Colt McCoy. That's the one thing that stood out in his game last week against Pittsburgh. If you get open, he's going to put the ball in an area where you can catch it. He did throw an interception on their first possession last week. He said it was like throwing it into a team meeting. <laughs> he knew that was one that he shouldn't throw, but boy, he's going to make some better decisions here today. It's second down and two. Hillis, the ex Bronco. He buries himself for a game of three. Should have a first down, down to about the eight yard line. As a thigh injury may have affected him last week, thought it was better this week. Yeah, he should be closer to 100% and not being as effective over the last couple of weeks. We talked about it, only 69 yards rushing in his last two ball games. But, you know, he's more than just a fullback. He can run it, he can catch it, he can, he can block. And what did some of the defenders for the New Orleans Saints say about it? He can go over you, around you, or through you. Brian Dabo trying to dial up some red zone plays for Colt McCoy to get it into the end zone here. It's first and goal at the eight. Clark was on the quarterback. Reeled in by Vickers. Osama Young got a tag on him down to the five. And they pick up on the play two, three, four yards is what they mark him now. Alex Brown gets into the face of Colt McCoy, forcing the throw. And watch, it's going to be right in his face right away. But Vickers got to catch it on the first chance, not bobble it, because that allows Usama Young to close in and make the tackle before Vickers can get to the end zone. See, if he catches that ball cleanly, he's going to have a better chance of eluding the first defender. Fourth reception of the season for Vickers. With second down and goal at the four. You're right, it is loud in here. Down at the five. Wrapped up on the play, Adele on the line. They lose a yard. It's a quarterback draw, and Colt McCoy is going to read the defense. Linebackers turn their back to you, then press the line of scrimmage. But then as they begin to close, you see Jolan Dumbar, 56, coming in. Now you just got to go to the ground, live to fight another day. Brown's got this great position on a 69-yard punt return by Eric Wright on a throw on a punt. By the deep back, Van Cripps, third goal and five. The nickel in is for the secondary in the Saints. The end zone complete. Rabisky and Watson were intercepted. So all the Saints do their job on defense, and they're going to relegate the Cleveland Browns to a three-point field goal try. And if you're the Cleveland Browns, you obviously want a touchdown with this red zone possession, but see the pressure? Now, Colt McCoy makes a smart play. Just throw it away. Get rid of it. Yeah, you take a hit. But you cannot afford to take a sack and have yourself knocked out of field goal range. Go ahead and take the points by the field position. Phil Dawson will be trying the field goal. 23-yard try. And it's 3-0 Cleveland. So they score first with 10-25 to play here in the first quarter. Set up on the 69-yard punt return by Wright. 
Saints find themselves in an early hole. This has been rare this season for the defending champion. Uh, you got to give the Cleveland Browns a lot of credit. I think their defensive stop on, on that first possession for the New Orleans Saints. And then how about the win on special teams. So right now the Cleveland Browns are winning in those facets of the ball game, getting off to a really good start. Like you said, they're going to have to be a little creative today. Aren't they? I think you have to be when you're facing this kind of offense. This is Cody Roby. One down on the play. Trusnick got a 26 yard return out to the 24. Second look at Drew Brees, who finds himself down 3 0. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. E Trade. And by Toyota. Beautiful weekend in New Orleans. 3 0 Cleveland on top after a very interesting punt return by the Browns. Kind of caught New Orleans off guard. They get the 23 yard field goal. Here's a second look at Drew Brees, who last week, he and his boys won 31 6 in Tampa, most complete game of the season. From the 23, first down and 10. Boy, it's fun to watch him in Friday practice, isn't it? It really is. And for Drew Brees, he says it's all about practice, it's all about the process. Big rep guy and likes the repetitions. Ivory on first down and 10. Kenny Coleman makes the grab, but Tom Rubin was there too. It's a gain to the 27 to pick up a five. Let's go back to the punt return because Eric Wright eventually is going to get the ball. That's where he initially lines up. Now go ahead and roll it because watch, he bails and rolls all the way back. Everyone is running towards Joshua Cribs. And if you wonder if this was a legal throw, yeah, because he throws it behind him over to Eric Wright. And look at the convoy of blockers over there where they have it walled off. And if Mitchell doesn't fight his way through, right, so he's probably going to score a touchdown. Gibbs in the backfield, second down and five. Oh, brought down by Fujita, who made a nice tackle on the first series defensively. Gets a sack right there to Scott Fujita, who's a valuable member of this team. That dropped his back to about the 18-yard line. At the top, working against your tight end, Dave Thomas can't keep Fujita from getting the sack on his former teammate, Drew Brees. And Fujita, when I talked to him yesterday, he said that Rob Ryan is much in the same way like the defensive coordinator for the Saints, Greg Williams, is. They like to scheme with players. They have a blitz for just about every guy on the defense. He allows you to go out and make some plays. And, you know, I'm sure he told Scott Fujita, I'm going to allow you to sack your former teammate early in the ball game. I'm calling him number. Now Brees on his third and 15. Track the shotgun snap. Did get it out to Liddell Bentz, who was brought down on the play by Bowen. That's a gain of six, shy of a first down. Three and out for Brees in the New Orleans offense. And the Cleveland Browns defense has already done a good job. Look, that, that ball was snapped before Drew Brees was ready. So you have to ask if Jonathan Goodwin, the center, could hear even with the crowd being somewhat active, even while they have the ball. Breeze wasn't ready. This offense for the Saints doesn't appear to be ready. Morstead will put it away and Cribs back by himself this time at the 27. Torrance brings him down along with Giordano at about the 43 yard line on a 17 yard return. 49 yard plus. A second look at Colt McCoy. 820 in the first. Welcome back, Kevin. Let's take a look at the 2010 rookie quarterback class. How about Sam Bradford, the job he's doing with the St. Louis Rams? Already won half of his starts. Jimmy Clausen in Carolina. Three starts, but returned back to the bench. Tim Tebow scored his first touchdown as a Denver Bronco last week. Max Hall, the rookie from BYU, he beat the New Orleans Saints in week five. 30 to 20. How about Colt McCoy now in his second NFL start. So this rookie quarterback class I think rounded out by a former third round pick in Colt McCoy. They're showing themselves to be a pretty good class so far. After the New Orleans three and out they put it away 44 yard line first down and 10. This is Lewis out of Arkansas. Yeah, jumping on his back. Nice looking run to about the 48 yard line and a pickup of eight yards by Hillis. Well, Yates will start at the right guard because Womack, who started there last week, is out now at the right tackle, taking the place of Tony Pachos, who went on the injured list, and he's done for the season. Good to see Josh Cripps back. He's already affected the game with that pass on the punt return. 
Set up the long return and eventually a field goal for the Cleveland Browns. So it is second down and two. And Stucky on the floor. So Alex Brown coming in just about brought him down. McCoy gets it away incomplete. It'll be third down and two. Here is Adele. He's been in on two tackles already for this New Orleans defensive front. Ellis and him. A nice roadblock in the middle of this 43 defense. Vilma anchors it. Joan Dunbar is a guy to watch today, taking the plays of the injured Scott Shanley. And in the secondary, all kinds of movement. Robinson is a rookie at the left corner, and Jenkins, who has been starting at safety, now moved to the right corner. It's third down and two. Hillis is a play back to the first down run by Hillis, who is upended by Sharper in for his first play today. Now to the 42-yard line, picks up six. And they move the chains for the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns believe they can run the ball against what they believe is a lighter front for the New Orleans Saints. They believe that their offensive line can dominate and get movement and get Peyton Hillis to the second level. John Peyton talks about playing complementary football. He needs points on the board from his offense to help protect his defense from this running game of the Cleveland Browns. Carlton Mitchell is a rookie. First NFL experience. Bottom of your screen. First and ten for McCoy. Going deep and almost had his guy. There's a flag on Jenkins. They were going for Cribs. Jenkins was in good position and not so sure that he made a lot of contact, but he did shield Joshua Cribs from coming back to the ball because he never turned around to find the ball. Remember, the Saints are playing without their two starting corners. 27, defense. Ball we play to the spot of the foul. First down. As a defensive back, when you were playing in the NFL, how did you used to go after a play like that? You have to find the ball. See, he never looks back and see he throws the arm up to prevent Joshua Cribs from coming back to the ball. And remember, Jenkins had started the previous five games at safety with Darren Sharper out. Did play corner at Ohio State, was a former first-round pick last year for the New Orleans Saints, played both corner and safety, but now he's pressed into action because both Jabari Greer and Tracy Porter are out of today's game. Two tight ends, first and goal at the fourth, second time, and two possessions, they've had a goal to go. Hillis, Thomas with the block, Steinbach with the block. That is a four-yard touchdown run by Peyton Hillis. And Cleveland has jumped out to a 9-0 lead. We told you they thought they could run the ball. They thought they had a more physical presence in terms of their ability to run it. Watch Patrick Robinson in the corner. He comes up. He hits no one. He doesn't constrict the running lane so Darren Sharper can come up and make the tackle. When you fail to contain the running game, Peyton Hillis is able to get to the second level and just walk in the end zone untouched. This is going to surprise some people around the NFL when right? this score pops up on the out-of-town scoreboard. Shocking. on CBS is sponsored by Sprint, the Now Network, and by McDonald's. I'm loving it. The New Orleans Saints have had the ball twice today. Five plays punt, three plays punt. Rounds have had it twice. They got a 23-yard field goal and a four-yard touchdown run. Moments ago by Ellis, another kickoff by Phil Dawson of the Cleveland Browns. Kobe will return this from the seven. Tripped up on the play, Ben Trojan, 41. Tripped him up on the play, the expatriate. That is a 12-yard return. Let's see what Drew Brees has up his sleeve here. Down 10 zip. You're watching the NFL on CBS. So far, it looks like the defensive coordinator of the Browns, Rob Ryan, has the upper hand on that New Orleans offense. They've gotten off to a great start. Eight plays, 14 total yards for Sean Payton's offense. And what is Rob Ryan doing? He's winning on the early downs, first and second down, forcing 
Third and 10 on the first possession, then third and 15 on the second possession. That's in the backfield. Nickel secondary, first and 10 for Green. Flag is down, as you can see. Down he goes at the 17-yard line. Schieffering is in there as well. Really pushing the pocket. Loss of two as it stands now. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Hit the quarterback in the head. 15-yard penalty. First down. <laughs> Rob Ryan's not happy with that one because it was great coverage on the back end. And watch how they pinch the pocket. Breeze has nowhere to go with this football. So all you got to do, don't go to the head. <laughs> Why did you do that, Eric Barton? You slapped him in the head. You get yourself a sack. You talked about how the defense is getting off to a great start. And one penalty flag could give Drew Breeze and his New Orleans Saints offense a second life. Rob Ryan, none too happy. Four in the secondary on a first and ten. He's out posted. Sheldon Brown. He to on the play up to the 41. See, everything that Drew Brees in this offense does, it's about rhythm. It's about timing and tempo. He hits the top of his drop. Ball out to the receiver as he clears underneath. Ball upon Marcus Colston. He's making the catch. Anything you can do as a defense to disrupt that timing. Take away his first receiver in the progression. Chip away at the receivers as they're leading the line of scrimmage. And then you have to get pressure in the face of Drew Brees and change his launch pad. Out of Green, second down and two. <laughs> right, Sean Rogers who is in on the defensive line to pick up a four on the play. Marvin at the 45-yard line. They get a first down on the play, and the top of Rubin was there with the stop. And what did Sean Payton tell us? He said everything for his football team starts up front with his offensive line. He believes it gives the team their identity, their ability to power it inside with a running game. And we're talking about guys like Jonathan Goodwin, Carl Nix, Jari Evans, John Stinchcomb, Jamad Bushra. They have to protect the quarterback and power the running game. If those five guys don't win, it's going to be hard for the Saints to win. First and ten. Hydrate. Jumping on his back was Gokar, gain of five on the play after the 49-yard line. The new NFL.com mobile apps have arrived. No matter where you are, you can track scores at fantasy lineups and get highlights of your team's big plays. Go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. In fact, Peyton told us yesterday that it, the offensive line in his view is the most important segment of a team. It takes, um, uh, in terms of the confidence for the rest of the team, it's built off your ability to what he say after every run, he want to see defensive guys adjusting their face. Now. I think that says it all. Second and six, and this is Ivory. Moving, part of the guy, bringing him down, gain of four, mark him down to the 47. Chris Ivory, remember they did lose Pierre Thomas. He's been out. Of course, Reggie Bush, he's he's out, and Reggie Bush is sort of the wild card where you get a lot of the trick plays, really can make you pay against a soft cover two zone. But Chris Ivey, 158 yards rushing last week, averaged 10 yards per carry. So when you can run the ball effectively in between the tackles as they did last week, it opens up the rest for Drew Brees in the passing game. That's his end. Brees are looking at it. Oh, third down and two. More. Hayden, the rookie, pushes him out of bounds. At about the 36-yard line with the catch and run of 11 on the first down. Are you love what Lance Moore gives to this offense? He is probably their more consistent wide receiver in terms of yards after catch, moving the chains, a red zone weapon. Had some big plays last week against Tampa Bay, and you see him beating Joe Hayden to get open and create a new set of downs for his quarterback, Drew Brees. Second singles quarterback, 20,000 yards passing, second only to Archie Mack. 64 Street is coming as a tackle eligible on this first attempt. Pitch out to Ivory. Back by Bushrod. Two by Rubin at about the 30-yard line. That's a gain of six in the adjustments you see here on the Saints and what they're doing on this drive as opposed to the first two they have. They're winning on the early downs, on first and second down. Their ability to run the ball and create 
manageable second and third down. Rob Ryan was able to get them in third and long on those previous two possessions. You see the first two drives for the New Orleans Saints, only 14 yards. This drive alone, 50 yards, and most of that coming via the running game. So the offensive line starting to heat up. As we said, they set the tone. A couple tight ends on second down for Colston. Dropped out by T.J. Ward. He was a second-round pick out of Oregon, the rookie, with his second tackle today. It's a gain of four. And they'll spot him at the 3-25 yard line. And what the Cleveland Browns have to be careful because that rhythm short passing game by Drew Brees, we told you at the top that he's very aggressive. As you take a look at Eric Mangini, he will take shots down the field. The double move by Lance Moore, Devery Henderson to get behind your defensive backs and you know this secondary for the Browns they've given up big plays over the last few years. And that seems off it's so multiple. Huh? All the different looks. Here's Ivory knocked down and was grabbed initially by Roth and bounces as you can see and then Roth comes back and bear hugs him and gets him down with a loss of four on the play back to the 30. But that Saints offense will give you a lot of looks on every play. Well, there's no doubt about that. And they have a number of different wide receivers to go to. But how about different backs? Depth at the running back position, Sean Payton says, has saved their season. Look at Chris Ivory. He's just a real difficult running back to get on the ground. He finishes off runs very well. And if you lose a Pierre Thomas and then a Reggie Bush, if you can go to a player like Chris Ivory, a rookie, from Tiffin College and get that kind of production that tells you about the depth and talent on this roster. Into the nickel on second and 14 Greens. It's a good looking rookie tight end. Jimmy Graham, third round pick out of Miami, picks up 10 right there. And he's down to the 20. You know, you talk about many weapons around Drew Brees. Last year, the New Orleans Saints had seven different players. We had 35 receptions or more. It's only happened twice in the history of the National Football League. We had seven players on the same team with 35 or more receptions. You see Drew Brees' numbers on third down. Best in the National Football League converting over half of those possessions. But Jimmy Graham is another tight end to go along with those weapons we talked about. This season, the Saints have eight different receivers with five or more receptions. Third, fourth, three. The change of the play. Timeout. Didn't like what he yep, saw. You're right. so they burn their first. Clock first. 20 seconds to play here in the first out. quarter. Cleveland shutting out Breeze. Okay. Solomon on this third New Orleans possession. They've kind of been chiseling away at that Cleveland defense. They got an 11-yard catch and run by Moore. A 10-yard catch by the rookie tight end Graham. He finds himself at the 20 now. 11th play of this drive, third and four. Yeah, they've converted a third and two on this possession. Now looking at third and four, much better than those third and long situations on the previous two possessions. Good time. Touchdown, Moore. And I think he beat Eric Wright. Flag is thrown. Cleveland caught a break. Flag is thrown in the backfield with the New Orleans Saints. The officials are huddling up talking about it as Sean Payton awaits for a decision. They're not so sure amongst themselves. Walt Coleman is our referee today. We have fouls on both teams. Illegal hands to the face, 73. Offense, illegal hands to the face, 92. Defense, those penalties offset, third down. I don't know why they're clapping. They didn't get the touchdown. <laughs> they're all excited here about that. That, yeah. that killed them. I think they thought that when we say they, we're meaning the fans here at the New Orleans Superdome. We, they must have thought the play would stand. Exactly. But exactly. you'll see, here, here they come. There's the hand right here. Look at that. Hand to the face. That's Sean Rogers who gets called. They both had their hands in each other's faces, <laughs> and both of them drew a flag. And that should have been offset right there. Well, here's a look into the nickel. Third and four, 11th play of the drive. And back in the 20. Good ball by Nix. Moore, who was in the Cleveland camp a couple years ago, shoved out of bounds by Mike Adams. Game of six, third and four was the play. They get a first down to the 14 of the Cleveland Browns. Boy, Lance Moore is so good. He runs great routes. He provides Drew Brees with a security blanket, with a place to go when you feel some kind of anxiety. 
He knows how to get separation and make plays for his quarterback. So Lance Morris caught passes of 11 and 6 yards. The drive continues, but the Saints find themselves down 10 nothing at the end of one on the CBS. Cleveland has scored on their first two possessions. The four-yard touchdown run by Hill was interesting, but the most interesting play of the game and a punt to Cribs. He went up a couple yards, then threw a cross-field pass to Wright, who then scampered 69 yards. Caught the Saints off guard. That got them a 23-yard field goal, so 10 nothing as we start this second quarter. And the Saints will have it first and 10. Three in the backfield, the call. Sean Rogers in there, Bowen in there. And a gain of three. We'll spot him at the 11. Very difficult for this New Orleans Saints offense to get movement against a very stout physical front for the Cleveland Browns. Sean Rogers goes 350 pounds. And you get guys like Kenyon Coleman. You have some veteran players on this defense who know how to play. And Scott Vegeta is another leader that you put on this defense who has just seen so much and so versatile in their talents that they really make for a very difficult group. Hits his head. Here's a look into the middle. Second down and seven. Intercepted by Fuchita. He has been all over the field. Knicks makes the stop. Put him at the 19. First turnover of the game. And Cleveland and Rob Ryan have dialed up the right defense once again. Now here's what he's seen. See, stop it right there. Now you don't know where to go with the ball. Of course, this is Fujita's going to get the interception. Both of the ball, there was only one guy with his hand on the ground, and that's Sean Rogers. So they took away Drew Brees pre-snap read. They made him read on the run, and then he committed the error. That's what Eric Mangini said. They had to make him do. We don't want him reading our defense before the snap of the ball. We want him to have to read it. Public is going to move. Huge error in the red zone by Drew Brees. Seventh interception of the season. You can see it's been since early last season when he threw his interception in the red zone. First and ten for Colt McCoy. Hillis has blocked up there after a gain of four. Womack opened up the door to the 23-yard line. Now it's up to the defense to get a stop. Because I talked with Drew Brees. Remember a couple of weeks ago against Arizona? Brees had three interceptions in that game. I said, what's the, you know, what do you tell yourself? What's the coaching point when you throw picks like that? You lose a ball game. He looked at me square in the eye. He said, tell myself they got luck. That's how supremely confident Drew Brees is. Take a look at Eric Mangini. His deep is off to a good start, getting points off turnover. After that, Clark tackle. Second down and six. End around. Yaman figures. Matt the center up there at the block and figures who was signed this week is brought down by Will Smith. That's a loss of four on the play back to the 19. Watch, he's going to come around on the reverse. And you've been sitting on the sofa for a little bit, so you trip over your own feet just a little bit. It takes a while to get your feet under you. But Figures has some speed that he brings to this football team. Hey, look right there. Uh, you know, that's the, the turf being accredited with a tackle on that play. Baltimore, Detroit, Tampa Bay, and Oakland, the last stops for Figures. There is a third and ten. And they're in the nickel. They've brought in Lee Torrance. <laughs> Looking for Hillis. He ran straight the ball and outside. Three and out for the Cleveland Browns. They'll have to punt for the first time today. Now Greg Williams starts to dial up some pressure and force Colt McCoy to throw the ball before he's ready or before anyone else is ready. You have to be able to speed up the play for a young quarterback, and Greg Williams knows that all too well. He loves to blitz, doesn't he? He loves to blitz anyone, especially a rookie quarterback. Moore is back. Reggie Hodges had a terrific day last week against Pittsburgh. Four punts inside the 10. We'll get the long snap from Humphrey on. Moore. Oh, and a fumble. And it was picked up by Graham, the tight end. He's got a blocker ahead. That was Young, and he takes the ball to the 50. So the alert rookie tight end out of Miami has a 15-yard return. 45-yard punt with no hang time whatsoever. Here come the Saints down 10 zip. And some interesting numbers with the 10-0 Cleveland lead. Cleveland Browns doing everything right, all the little things. End around on first and 10. Meacham 
for a gain of a couple yards on the play. Spotman at the 48. Speaking of doing everything right, it starts with special teams on the punt return. Josh Cribs with a throwback to Eric Wright, and he'll sell 69 yards to set up their first score. Pass interference on Malcolm Jenkins sets up a score for the Cleveland Browns. And then how about Scott Fujita coming up with the interception down inside the red zone to turn back Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints offense. Eric Mangini puts together a very scrappy group here at the Cleveland, Bra Cleveland Browns. Second down and eight. This is Ivory. And he brought down on the play by Kenny Coleman after a gain of two down to the 46-yard line. And don't forget the offsetting penalties, which wiped out the Drew Brees touchdown pass, too, on a good-looking drive they were putting together. Absolutely. And, and the Cleveland Browns, they know that they have to come out and try to just stem the tide the wave of momentum that the New Orleans Saints would normally give you on offense they normally score on that first possession Rob Ryan was able to get the stop able to get some turnovers they're going to keep bringing the pressure at two Brees. faces a third and six going into the dime Dinner's almost picked off by T.J. Ward that is a Punting situation, three and out for the New Orleans Saints again. They've had it four times, three punts. And Jason Trusnick, he drops out, and, and, and here comes T.J. Ward. So you don't know, if you're Drew Brees, you don't know who's coming or who's dropping in coverage. Typically, only one man will have his hand down on the ground, and that's the nose tackle, Sean Rodgers. And he said this defense gives him more looks than almost any other defense A he lot faces. Of yeah. The punt here coming up for Thomas Morstan, third in gross this season. He back his cribs. He'll fly. He'll bounce. Technical ball. He'll be marooned to roll the Cleveland Browns at the two. 44 yards. Well placed punt by Morstead. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by TD Ameritrade. Exxon Mobil. Taking on the world's toughest energy challenges. And by New York Life Insurance Company. The buzz around the NFL this past week centered on the rugged hits from a week ago in Pittsburgh. James Harrison fined $75,000 with hits on Cribs in Mexico. In New England, Brandon Merriweather fined $50,000 for the hit on the tight end Todd Heap. In Atlanta's Dante Robinson fined $50,000 for the hit on Deshaun Jackson. I think the league did a really good job of reacting, but not overreacting and suspending players. Because right now, I, you know, we know that player safety is the overall message. That has to come first. But right now, I think there's some inconsistency in how the rules have been interpreted and how they've been enforced. I think you have to know the rules. Any player that leads with the head, shoulder, or forearm towards the head or neck of a defenseless player, that player is in fraction. It is a penalty, but it needs to be three components before it can be considered an illegal hit. Five defensive linemen. On the two, first and ten after the punt by New Orleans. Willis, about a yard. And Salman, it's not about the NFL going soft or, or giving the offense, which the defense would say, a clear advantage on this deal. No, yeah, I think you have to protect players. There's no doubt about that. Player safety comes first. Sean Payton talked about it when we met with him. So did Eric Mangini. And, and we hear these things, helmet to helmet here. Every time the linemen come off the line of scrimmage, offense, defense, line, helmets are going to collide. So helmet to helmet hit alone does not constitute an illegal hit. You have to have those three components involved. Three defensive backs on second down the line, and Vickers drops the ball. Coverage outside, applied by Jonathan Gold. And Vickers has to make that catch. Good throw by Colt McCoy, backed up in his own end zone. He gets his fullback out in the flat. Come on, reward the rookie quarterback by making the play. He's going to run a long way if he's able to make that grab. Colt McCoy, and what did he tell his teammates when he spoke with them the night before the Pittsburgh game? He says, guys, I'm going to play well. He's like, you can count on me. And then he told him after the game, he says, look, we can't be happy with coming close. I expect to win. I'm not happy with a loss, even though everyone said he played well. He was not happy after the Steelers game. Into the nickel, third and nine. Caught. And the beauty it was, Robisky grabs it, banged by Sharp, picks up seven on third and nine. 
And three and out, they got a punt. Now check this out. This is a bang bang play. Now Sharper's going for the ball. Look, he leads in, or I should say the defensive Malcolm back Jenkins. Jenkins mistake, he yep. goes in and so he gets there as the ball arrived. You know he didn't lead with helmet or shoulder pad, but he was playing the ball. I think you're gonna have some plays in the National Football League where a defender is, is playing the ball and still may hit a player, but you could tell no harm was intended. Reggie Hodges on a ball state. Lance Moore is back. Retrieving it at the 38. On top of 4 5. Go Kong coming down there. Starting linebacker playing the special teams. Makes the stop. Three yard return. 53 yard punt. Breeze is back out there. A no surprising start for the number eight offense in the NFL. That was a red zone pick. Couple three and outs for Breeze. Very surprising. And I think the way that Rob Ryan is moving his. Defensive players around very confusing right now for Drew Brees. Julius Jones in the backfield, first and ten after the Cleveland punt. Blocked by Stitchko. Wow, that was almost picked up. Go Kong had a hand on it, as did Fujita, who already has intercepted his former teammate Brees today. And watch the windows of opportunity for Drew Brees are very small. Look at Go Kong. Look at Fujita. And they were able to shrink that window, not allowing the ball to get to Jimmy Graham. <laughs> I'm not so sure the ball didn't hit Graham in the head. Maybe he had a chance at it, but you got to love the way these linebackers are flying around, making plays, and constricting those windows for Drew Brees. Trying to get the ball to Shockey, but it just, uh, just hasn't happened. Second down and 10. Ivory is in. Oh, Tried to block and he couldn't get Fujita out of the way and a gain of four on the play to the 47 yard line. Tackle made by Ruben to James Brown in New York. Hey, Kevin and Solomon, take a look off of a Miami fumble. Ben Roethlisberger hooks up with Heinz Ward. Solomon, I know you appreciate the second and third effort. Signature efforts by Heinz Ward, 21 yards to pay dirt. Pittsburgh on top of Miami, 10 6. That in the second. Back to Kevin Harlan and Solomon Wilcox. J.B. Hines Ward has always been a blue collar guy. <laughs> he wouldn't do it the easy way. He always had to take that difficult route. On the defensive match, third and five for Breeze. Wide open, Graham. Second catch today for the rookie. Fujita from behind brings him down. It's a first down catch and run of 14 to the Cleveland 39. We talk about depth of talent. We mentioned all the wide receivers and all the running backs. And so you have Shockey, Dave Thomas, and now the rookie Jimmy Graham. He's long, he's fast, creates a huge pass catching radius for his quarterback, Drew Brees, to get the ball to him. If it's thrown high, Graham can go at 6'6, 260, makes for a very interesting weapon in this offense. He had only had one catch coming into today. Yeah, and he's going to be getting more. Ivory is in on this first and ten. That's the call. Dix is free and he's in the second down. Down at the 39. That's the line of scrimmage. Elam was there to get him, as was Sheldon Brown. The gain right now of 18 yards to the 20, but let's see what happens. Holding 44 offense. 10 yard penalty. Still first down. That's the fullback, Heath Evans. Another costly penalty for the New Orleans Saints. And coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cowher for the latest NFL scores, news, and highlights. That's coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York. Kevin, I want to go back to what we were talking about. We talked about the illegal hits, because I think it's going to be a conversation as the season goes on. There needs to be those three components to constitute a legal hit. We'll talk about it after the play. First and 20 into the nickel. That's the third time at David Thomas. Get a bounce by the rookie Hayden. And a corkscrew move to the 35 yard line. Solomon picks up 14 yards. Yeah, and everyone's going to be talking about a helmet to helmet hit, but helmet to helmet hits doesn't constitute an illegal hit. I think anytime you're leading with the head, shoulder, or forearm towards the head of a defenseless player. And so you need all those components. If you're leading with your helmet, your shoulder, forearm, and you go to the head of a player who's in a defenseless position, you get those three components together, they're going to flag you. So I still think that you can play the game aggressively. If you're a defensive player, you can play aggressively to still play clean. Seven, six, this is I agree. Among many in there to make that stop. Roth is at the bottom of that pile. Gain of about a yard to the 34-yard line. But does it change the 
From a defensive standpoint, does it change the target area where you're aiming to tackle? Certainly, it, it, it moves the target line down below the helmet and right around the shoulder area. I think all players have to adjust to that. Defensive players, we've had to adjust for a long time. You put in the five-yard bump rule. You put in all these rules. I think you all have to continue to adjust. And for the safety of the players, I think it's a worthwhile adjustment. That's what's in into the nickel three. Lance Moore. For the 20 yard line. That's a catch and run of 14. So we've had passes to the tight ends. Graham for 14. 14 today. Thomas at 14 right there to Lance Moore. For three. And right now, Drew Brees starting to heat up somewhat. They move the pocket. Watch, he starts to buy a little time, drifting to his right, then finds Lance Moore coming across the field. So. I think when they give him the conventional looks, he's feeling a little bit more comfortable in the pocket. But when the looks become more exotic for the Cleveland Browns defense, one guy with his hand in the ground and everyone else standing up, he's having problems reading the defense. Reeves Jones is in on first and ten. Reeves backed away. Beautiful play by rookie T.J. Warren. He's the leading tackler. He had ten tackles last week against the Steelers, which led the Brown D. Completions are hard to come by for Drew Brees against this Cleveland Brown defense. They came into this game ranked 21st in pass defense. We saw Ben Roethlisberger throw for three touchdown passes against this group one week ago. And right now, Drew Brees is trying to solve what he can consider a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> the puzzle isn't quite coming together. You can see 31 plays, 120 yards. They've had the ball in terms of time of possession, but no points to show. On second and 10, Julius Jones. That's, that's Dallas Cowboys. Elam tries to throw him out of bounds. And a little wrap of about five yards on the play. They get six. Sean Payton said that his three running backs, whether it's Ivory, Liddell, Betts, or Julius Jones, they all do something differently. But said Jones kind of can do what both of those guys do, kind of a combination of the two. He was in Dallas when Sean Payton was the offensive coordinator there, knows the offense, and you could see the coaches saying, hey, you got to turn it up sooner or later. We don't want you running out of bounds. Plant that foot in the ground, get going downhill toward the end zone. Swap man top of screen. Lance Moore has had his three receptions today on third down. Good time. Here comes Tresnick into the nickel. Breeze. Colston was covered by Ward. Help from Adams. Incomplete. It's fourth down and four. They're not going to settle for a three point try are the Saints here. And I can tell you right now, he I thought he had Meacham. You can look at it right in here. He had Meacham just for a second. But then he didn't pull the trigger because that's the area where he had his first interception. And so right now, with all the movement on the back end of that Cleveland Brown defense, I think it has Drew Brees a little bit hesitant, not sure of what he's seeing, and choosing to protect the football, allow Hartley to attempt a field goal. And we can see with the graphic, he has struggled. It's a 32-yard try. He's been hooking left, but that time he splits the middle and takes away the zero. But the Browns do their job. They relegate Sean Payton at offense to three, and they still lead by seven. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Miller Lite Aluminum Pint. Four more ounces of that great Pilsner taste. And by KFC. Try KFC's new delicious chicken sandwich on a sweet Hawaiian bun. So good. Moments ago, a 32-yard field goal by Hartley, who is getting ready to kick off this ball to Josh Cripps, who in his career has 10 touchdown returns, eight as a kickoff return man. It's, it's good to see him back kind of continue our conversation on the big hits from last week. He had a concussion. Practice Friday for the first time. He's back in there, and he has made a difference today with a big play, a pass, and a punt return. From the two here, the electrifying Cripps. And a fumble on the play is a loose. I don't know if I heard a whistle. The ball is down at the 21. Let's see where they point. They're right now pointing for the Saints. Cribs is fumbled. Oh, they're going to say it is Cleveland's ball. So Walt Anderson, or Walt Coleman, our referee, pointed for the Saints. As they continue to unravel, yep, it is going to be Cleveland's ball. <laughs> <They still can. laughs> Big game of Twister there on the turf here in the Superdome. 
Rips fumbled last week, too, after that big hit by Harrison. <laughs> this ball is it changing hands. It looked like the Saints had a real good opportunity to recover this football. Look at that, that guy's legs. That's Sorensen down there. Look at him coming out. He's a scrapper. He not only lost, uh, well, he saved the ball, but he lost his helmet. <laughs> if you're going to choose between the two, keep the ball. Arnu was down there, too. Stanley Arnu was in there in that scrum. Well, let's take a look at this one. You have to down. ask if he was even. Yeah, it looked like he was down, but there you see all the white jerseys. Look at how, how did Sorensen pry that ball loose? A safe player did have it. Reminds you that uh, onside kick in the Super Bowl a little Absolutely. bit right there. Absolutely. There was some changing of hands with the ball in that game. And as you can see, Christian Prelude comes over, but I think you have to say that he was down. His ball elbow was, hit. Yep. Yeah, ball was down. Then it came out. Now we have a challenge, I think. By Peyton, who threw the flag out, Brickley picked it up. And I think he said you can't challenge the call. You can't challenge the possession call. There you can challenge the fumble initially. But I think even if he challenges that, I think I just want to end up losing the challenge because in my mind it appeared as though Joshua Cribbs was down. On contact the recovery before the ball came of a fumble in the field of play is not reviewable. First down, Cleveland. Plus, I think his elbow was down with possession of the ball. I think that's the initial look at it. There you see it. Ball down. Okay, he's down. Then ball comes out. But I, this is the part that Sean Payton's looking at. Okay, we have the ball, and then Sorensen jumps on top of us and starts scrapping at it. There's no way that Sorensen had more of a possession of the ball than Pearson. Prelude. So here's Colt McCoy, who started last week in Pittsburgh. Today, Colt McCoy starts in the home of the Super Bowl champions. You couldn't get two worse venues to start oh, your career, huh? Very difficult assignments. First and ten. Oh, slapped down right in his face. That's a loose ball. Was it intercepted? That's what they're trying to say. No. Danny Clark, the starter last year for the Giants. One time starter for the Saints up in the grill of McCoy. Second down and 10. Just a three man route. They're bringing pressure. Danny Clark, 55, in the face of Colt McCoy, gets his hands up, rightfully so, and knocks that ball down. Ben Watson, the tight end for the Cleveland Browns. He had come into today's game. He's had five or more receptions in each of their last four games. And so far, he hasn't caught one single pass. They've thrown it to him once. But Colt McCoy says, I've grown comfortable with going to the tight ends. Right now, they're taking the tight ends away from the young Colt McCoy. The second 19 is coming up as you can see the discussion on the field with Coleman and crew. The previous play was an incomplete pass. The ball was batted down. Second down. And had it been caught, it would have been McCoy because I think it went right back in his lap. So, not second and 19, second down and 10. The chains on the sideline had gone back. The initial ruling was that, but you and I looked at each other and said that ball was incomplete. The ball was on the ground. So I thought maybe we were seeing stuff. What we saw. Yeah, I don't. But McCoy almost on the ricochet got him. Watch this now. It almost fell right back in his lap. Take a look at it. There was the ball going down and hits his leg. See, then it hits the ground. That yeah, ball clearly hit the ground. It hit him a lot of places. Second down and ten. Mike Bell is in the game, and the former Eagle and Saint, who was with this team a season ago, picks up four yards. He's out to the 25. They made a trade last week, sending Jerome Harrison to the Philadelphia Eagles. A tackle made by Jeff Charleston. Bell came over. They think he fits this offense pretty well. Yeah, you can see, look, Bell had over 600 yards rushing last season with the New Orleans Saints. Helped to fuel a run game and helped to win a Super Bowl championship. So, you know, he's got to be eager to come back here and play against his former teammates. And now you can expect it to get really loud here at the Super Bowl on third and six. Hillis is in nickel secondary, third and six. Hillis a block. McCoy is down. On the 23-yard line. He's slow to get up. Loss of two. That is a sack. Jumping off the pile. Will Smith along with.
and that guy right there, Joe Juwan Dunbar. Yeah, take a look at it. Everyone's coming. They bring five and they hug the linebacker, Vilma Late. And he had nowhere to go with the ball. We call that a coverage sack. Look, he wants to get rid of it. Nowhere to go. He tucks it and run. And in that case, ball security is a good thing. You can't run to throw. You just got to run to live to fight another day. So after scoring their first two possessions, the Cleveland Browns, this is taken by Hodges right up the middle. He's got the first down. And there he goes, getting a block downfield from Sorensen. Getting another block, and look at the play for the Cleveland Browns. Take it down to the 10. What a game plan dialed up by Eric Mangini. On a fake punt, new life for the Browns. That's the putter Hodges, four years in the NFL, a 60. Brad Seeley loves it, a 67-yard run. Now watch this. It's going to open up right down the middle because look at the, the rush. Everybody goes outside. And look at that gaping hole, and Lance Moore is going to come up from his punt position, punt return position. He whips. So give Hodges a lot of credit for not allowing the first guy to take him down. It takes Malcolm Jen and Jenkins, excuse me, a true defensive player to come over and make the tackle. What a play. Brad Seeley, the special teams coach for the Cleveland Browns, dialing up some wonderful plays in the first half. It's Bell on the backfield on first and goal. And he's taken down by Clark and whacked by Vilma. The next New York Jet back to the 15-yard line and a loss of six on the play. He'll be second down a goal. And now it's up to Colt McCoy in this offense to make good on these extra possessions. This is a New Orleans Saints football team. We know the offense can score points in bunches. We know it's a really good defense. You end up with really good field position. Got to take advantage of it and punch it into the end zone. Secondary includes Shadow for New Orleans. Second goal at the 15. Thomas with the block. Hillis is up the screen. This defensive play it was a catch of a yard. That was it. Backers and defensive line got out there. Adele is part of the guys and brought him down. The key against any screen or quick out by the running back, as you can see. If you look at the lineman out in front, but you've got to be able to close quickly as Usama Young was able to do and get to the feet of the athletic P.J. Hillis. Third and goal, you've got to try to set up one of your tight ends. They're coming out with three wide receivers. Joshua Cribbs lined up at the bottom of your screen. Robinson had the nice shoestring tackle there. McCoy, Cribbs to the four. Hit brought down by Lee Torrance. That's a gain of 10. Good throw by McCoy. Mark him at the four. Not enough has been talked about Joshua Cribbs and his improvement as a wide receiver. Came into this league, former quarterback at Kent State, was very good on special teams where he has gone to Pro Bowls. But as a wide receiver playing out on the perimeter of the offense, he's improved his game. And for them to go to him down inside the red zone at a moment like that, they really have a lot of confidence in Joshua Cruz. So gain of 10 right there. Timeout taken by the New Orleans Saints. There's a look at McCoy. And there was a great story in the Cleveland Plain Dealer today about how McCoy, when he visited the Cleveland Browns, and is in President Mike Holmgren's office. And on the wall and back of Holmgren are pictures of Brent Favre and Joe Montana, guys that Holmgren had coached in his previous days. McCoy points up there and says, I want someday my picture to be next to those two. Well, you know, it got off to a good start last week. A long way from the Joe Montana, Brett Favre being in the same sentence, but how about the confidence of the young man? There's a 21-yard field goal by Boston. And it's 13 to 3, the Cleveland Browns. 2-18 to play here in the first half. Boy, got him close. Great special teams play. Thirteen to three of the Cleveland Browns on top of the New Orleans Saints surprising people I'm sure around the NFL with the second quarter clock showing 218. I don't know what's more surprising the fact that the Cleveland Browns are playing as well as they are and using all facets of their game or that Drew Brees and the offense of the New Orleans Saints the high powered offense of the Saints has just not put much of a dent into this game. I think Sean Payton when he talked to us he said it best about their win last week. He learned it from Bill Parcells. He said the desperate team, the most desperate team usually wins. And right now, Sean Payton has to be asking himself, 
Are the Cleveland Browns the more desperate team here? Because, of course, they're one in five. They come in here desperately needing a win, and boy, they're playing like they want the game more than the New Orleans Saints. Three yards deep, Courtney Rodi to bring out for the Cavs of the Yankees, and brought down by Costanzo on the special teams. 23-yard return to the 21-yard line. The two big plays of the game for the Cleveland Browns have come on special teams. The punt return to Joshua Cribs. You've got to stop him, but he throws it all the way back to Eric Wright, and he returns to 69 yards to set up their first score. And then how about Reggie Hodges? On the fake punt, he takes off Seller, makes Lance Moore miss, and then he puts it into great field position after being tackled by Malcolm Jenkins, and then they're able to put three more points on the board. So right now, special teams dialing up big plays for Cleveland. Into the nickel on first and ten. This goes off to Shockey with his first catch today. The tackle made by Adams, 11-yard pickup. It is a first down to the 32. Final minutes of any half, first half or second half, you know Drew Brees, the great quarterbacks, go to work to put points on the board. We've reached the two-minute warning at the Louisiana Superdome. Solomon, we began the broadcast today saying this hasn't been the same New Orleans team we saw last year. They haven't been really good this season in the final two minutes of the first half. And they've got to do a better job of just putting points on the board. And right now, they've got to settle down and take advantage of this opportunity. Seven defensive backs. The rush comes on. He was held and almost picked off by Bollinger. Was it? Yes, he's got the ball. This would be the second interception thrown by Breeze. He'll leap into the end zone. And that is a touchdown. No flag, no whistle. Drew Breeze has thrown his second pick. And the Cleveland Browns, led by the defense of Rob Ryan, shockingly lead the Super Bowl champions 19 to 3. Sometimes even the great quarterbacks can try to do too much. Just throw this one into the ground. No, he throws it back. A hole. And it hits off the back of his own <laughs> offensive lineman, Jari Evans, and goes right back into the hands of the defender. <laughs> David Bowens, who catches it and walks right in for a touchdown. A very bizarre play. Bowens comes up with a gigantic play. He's a 12-year veteran out of Western Illinois, and then all kinds of confusion on the extra point try. The silence inside the dome, notoriously one of the loudest buildings in the NFL, is unbelievable right now. Here comes a one in five Cleveland team who has played well. They've not gotten blown out in any game. Crossman, 92, defense. That five yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And Drew Brees, and, and no one more stunned than Eric Mangini, I guarantee you. Everyone is stunned because you wonder how did that just happen? Where the quarterback appeared to be throwing the ball away while he was under duress. And it hits Bowen. It bounces off Jari Evans and then ends up back in the hands of the defender who walks in for a touchdown. <laughs> 20 to 3 on the second career touchdown by veteran David Bowen. Wow. Coming up momentarily, we'll go to New York, our studios at CBS in the Sprint Halftime Report. Joining JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Bill Cower for the latest news, scores, and highlights. And I guarantee you, the top of the list will be this game <laughs> down here in New Orleans. That's coming up next on the Sprint Halftime Report. So Breeze with the red zone touchdown or interception. And then moments ago, he throws a pick and it hits. It almost looked like it hit the back heel of Evans, as you said, and ricochets right into the awaiting arms of David Bowen. It was as if oh Evans was able gosh. to kick it up, keep that ball from hitting the ground as it ended up in the hands of Bowens. 20 to 3, that is our score. The ensuing kickoff by Dawson will send Courtney Roby to a knee. That's the second touchback today. And so back out to the, he's played for a lot of teams. He's seen a lot of plays. And that beard, which is getting a little bit gray, to show you the uh, the scars he bears with so many NFL games played. <laughs> I put a smile on my face, too, after, after a gift like that just kind of popped right into your hands. Yeah, and Sean Payton wasn't smiling. He was looking up at the board saying, how did that ball end up in the hands of the defender without hitting the ground? And we said that this offense, they needed to just settle down, I think, in trying to do too much there. And obviously, it's just by happenstance, that play backfired on the New Orleans Saints. 
There are six defensive backs on first and ten from Greece. Betts picks up one. The pressure comes and down he goes. Corkstrews and that's Marcus Brewer who comes through. That is the third sack on Greece through that offensive line, which is coming off a very good game last week. A loss of eight. Back to the 12. Rob Ryan continues to do the job yeah. calling the plays. Rob Ryan has Drew Brees in his crosshairs. And you can see the loop stunt coming off that end. And then Bowen comes in to clean it up. But Bernard's able to come all the way around up the middle in the face of Drew Brees. And down in 18, this is Liddell Betts, the ex Redskin, who was hit by Adams and belted by Roth. And a gain of seven on the play on the catch and run, which takes him up to the 19 yard line. And last week, the New Orleans Saints go out to Tampa, and Drew Brees wasn't sacked in the game for the first time all season long. And today they get to him three times alone here in the first half. And Talked about this defense by Rob Ryan. Not just confusing the quarterback, how about confusing the protection schemes up front, the offensive lineman for the New Orleans Saints. So it's third and 11, and Brees taking his time. They're going to run down the clock. New Orleans does have a single timeout remaining. You can hear the boos beginning to cascade. From the top deck of the Superdome, so they'll run the clock down to 29 seconds. If you take a look at Sean Payton now in his fifth season with this New Orleans team. Tomorrow on CBS, how do you solve a murder when an old flame becomes the prime suspect? See why on Hawaii 5 0. It's TV's number one news show. It's tomorrow and it's on CBS. You know, Kevin, I think sometimes you're facing only seconds left, three seconds left, and you just had a critical error, critical turnover. Sometimes it's best to just go in at halftime regroup, and huh? regroup. Sometimes you can press it and end up committing another egregious error to really just widen the lead that the Cleveland Browns now have on the football team. Third and 11 going deep, and Sheldon Brown has just picked off Drew Brees. That's the third thrown by Brees. They were going deep for Meacham. It's like a punt more than anything else, and so the clock will now be at 20 seconds, and the Browns have three timeouts. It may be just like a punt, but no quarterback likes throwing interceptions. Yeah, they're taking a shot. He understands if I make this mistake, maybe it won't be a costly one. Maybe they won't be able to put points on the board but no way you go in at halftime feeling good about yourself if you're Drew Brees if you're the New Orleans Saints and you've thrown three interceptions in the first half of this game. Again to wonder if it's a little bit of a hangover here from the Super Bowl we mentioned at the top of the broadcast tough to repeat and of course we're only in week seven there could be a lot of overreaction but you've got your largest deficit yeah. against a one in five team. I wouldn't overreact and put what we're seeing in this game and talk about the Super Bowl or talking about a team that's ham hung over from the Super Bowl because last week they played very well. They clearly have not executed and have not been able to solve the puzzle that Rex Ryan is presenting on defense for Drew Brees and the offense. Now it's Eric Mangini's job to keep his team focused at halftime because they're as stunned as anybody. The Super Bowl champions are down by 17 at halftime on CBS. You see our halftime score. How did we get here? Well, 17 point lead for the Cleveland Browns, I think, is shocking for anyone who's watching this game. And you take a look at that score, it's because the Cleveland Browns has come out on special teams and then creating turnovers. Three interceptions off Drew Brees in the first half has made a huge difference for the football team. Let's now go to our points of protection brought to you by Allstate. Well, if you're Cleveland, you got to stay creative. 137 your team trick plays. And then for the New Orleans Saints, you got to protect the quarterback. He's been sacked eight times so far this year as Drew Brees, but three times today, leading to the three interceptions we talked about. And Drew Brees just has to be better. He did not play very well in the first half, did not diagnose and properly read the Cleveland Browns defense that Rob Ryan is presenting for him. And so he's been a little bit confused, and he's put the ball in harm's way, and those interceptions have come back to harm. I think coming into this game for the defending champs, they thought that maybe last week they turned the corner in that win at Tampa. Oh, absolutely. And remember, they had season high in points. They scored 31 points one week ago in a season high in total yards on offense and 212 yards rushing the football. So confidence was very high coming into this game. This is Prince will take it a yard deep as we start our second half here in New Orleans. Somebody lost the helmet. 
Gets tipped on the helmet. And there is the return of 29 yards. Well, you talk about those key plays in the first half. How about the punt return and throw back to Joshua Cribb over to Eric Wright. That went for 69 yards and set up the score. The red zone interception by Scott Kajita turned back to Saints offense is in the trick play. Reggie Hodges on the punt return. He's just going to take off and run with it. And then an ill-timed interception, the bounce of the ball into the hands of David Bowen. Goes back to a touchdown just before the end of the first half. Right now, the New Orleans Saints find themselves trailing by 17 points. What do you think that guy told his team in the locker room? He said, hey, we got to get back to doing the little things right. We've got to run block. We've got to get Chris Ivory to the second level. If the run game gets going, then that'll calm everything down for Drew Brees. If you force Drew Brees to have to throw your way back into this game, He's going to get some exotic looks from Rob Ryan, and I think some of the mistakes that we've seen in the first half will carry over to the second. First and ten for McCoy. And that is reeled in. That's Rogiski with a catch. 16-yard pickup to the 43-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Remember, Kevin, it was last week we saw Colt McCoy take his game to another level when he went into the second half of the ball game. In the first half, he only completed five passes in the first half of this game, but now he comes out with the I believe they're probably going to allow him to do more here in the second half. Summer Young wrapped him up first and ten. And Peyton Hillis. My Vickers, not a whole lot there. Gain of two. You can see Adele with the stop. Mark him at the 45-yard line. Hillis has been kind of an interesting guy. And what a backfield he played in at Arkansas with Felix Jones and Darren McFadden. He was an afterthought. Yeah, and a talented player in his own right. And, and while it's a different kind of skill set from McFadden and Felix Jones, he's still a guy that you can rely upon. They're going to have to rely upon him. If they're going to win this game today, he's got to run the ball and turn out chunks of yards and kill time off the clock here in the second half. That's a good point. Second and eight. Jesse Stuckey. Now done the play by the rookie. Uh, first round pick out of Florida State. Patrick Robinson with a gain of four near midfield. Peyton Hill has said that, yeah, these are three guys. He said, no wonder why we didn't win more games when we were at Arkansas <laughs> with that kind of talent. Look at the production from those guys, all three of them, and where they were drafted coming out of college at the University of Arkansas. You have those three guys in your backfield. Yeah, you ought to win plenty of ball games in the SEC. That was taken very high by the Raiders. Felix Jones, a surprise pick by Jerry Jones in Dallas. And of course, it was taken by Denver, traded during the offseason to Cleveland. Here's a third and four into the nickel. It's risky again. Ripped on the play by Jenkins, picks up two, shy of the first down. They put him at the 49, and Cleveland's going to have to punt on the first possession. Yeah, but when you blitz, you force a three-man drop. Look at that. Sharper nearly hit the ball as he was going in as a pass rusher. But the tight coverage by Malcolm Jenkins is really the key to the play because you know it's going to be a three-step drop. Ball comes out quick. You've got to make a tackle before they can extend for the first down. Four plays and punt for the Cleveland Browns. Hodges the punt. Back is more. Remember last week he had four inside the Pittsburgh 10. He puts in one right here inside the 10. Down to the seven. A punt that puts the Saints against their back. Their punter Hodges has been a weapon today, running the ball and punting the ball. Look at that. Nine punts down inside the 10-yard line, most of the National Football League. Clearly a phenomenal athlete. We saw him one week ago in Pittsburgh. And boy, just the hidden yardage that he's able to gain as a net result of changing field be a huge weapon for a football team. 67-yard, 68-yard fake punt all deep in New Orleans territory. Field position here for the Saints from their seven, first and ten. He's right to work. Eva makes the stop. A 21-yard strike to Colston, who has been his main target today to the 28-yard line. You can't be shy about what you do. And what Drew Brees does better than anyone is he can bang, bang. Look at that. Hit the player in stride over the middle of the field. Sean Payton and Drew Brees attack the seams of the defense as much as any offense in the National Football League and why he's thrown some interceptions.
three in the first half. You've got to come back and dial up those plays that you feel you execute the best. First and ten hit by Herbert. Uh, and his balance after the catch. Colston once again. Working on Sheldon Brown, 17-yard pickup after the 21-yarder moments ago. Another first down for the New Orleans Saints. Well, we met with Drew Brees. He exudes confidence, and it's the right kind of confidence. And he, he's proving it right now here in the second half. You throw three interceptions in the first half, and you come back. He knows Colson's going to come open on that seven route. He cuts it loose immediately. There's no hesitation right now with Drew Brees throwing the football here in the second half. Freeze in the backfield, first and ten, and the call. It's a flag tackled on the play by Schaefering. Three yard gain. Holding, 77, offense, 10 yard penalty. Another flag. One thrown right in the middle of the announcement. The umpire Roy Ellison was the one to cast that second foot. I was going to ask before when Sheldon Brown didn't wrap up the receiver. He just kind of wanted to bump up. I can never understand that from the defensive back. When you're trying to get the tackle. You got to wrap up. Absolutely. Holding number 77. Offense. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. 77. Both penalties will be assessed. Oh, Carl Nix. And that is the kind of penalty, those kinds of infractions that can derail a successful drive. Here it is right here. He's going to peel back now. Is that holding? <laughs> oh, yeah. So they got you, Carl. Now, don't do anything to draw another penalty. You're trying to hold on to Chris Gokhan, who had actually ran by you at leak through, trying to secure it. And so whatever it is, is he said to the official or whatever it is he did it drew another penalty flag and now it moves the Saints offense all the way back to the 20 yard line. It's not often that you say first and 35 but we'll say that from their 20 yard line. Remember earlier in the game the Saints had a 38 yard pass interference penalty. They've got five penalties for 78 yards in this game. Brought the blitz. Bets. A couple of blockers out there, including Carl Nix, and he works his way out to the 34-yard line on a catch and run of 15 yards on the play. Fujita with the stop for the Cleveland Browns. Just when you think this offense is starting to get some rhythm, they get the penalty, get backed up, and so you come back with a nice little screen play, and Nix comes out and get the block right there. And nice catch and run by Liddell Beck. Still more work needs to be done with a second and 21, but this is where Drew Brees has to be patient with a little bit a little bit back out of time. Brees with a couple tight ends. Good block by Evans. That's a good read on it right there. That's Matt Roth with the defensive end in college. He played for Miami. It's a loss of a yard. Betts is down. All to the 33. Boy, Roth is fast and physical in place he plays in a three-point stance he yeah, plays watch, outside yeah, watch this close in space now that's just gobbling up a lot of space very quickly to close in and make that tackle because if he doesn't get there then Betts is going to have room to run and it was a physical tackle by Matt Roth he was a state wrestling champion in the state of Iowa in high school showed some of that right there third and 22 six in the second day down lineman right now on defense for Cleveland. Everyone standing up. Difficult read for Drew Brees. Three snaps. Jones at his side. Julius Jones. No place to run. No place to hide. Hit by Bernard. Gain of a yard. They got to punt the ball. It'll be fourth and 21. And everyone here at the Superdome is born. No need to boo because. When you have every single guy standing up, it's hard to understand who's blitzing, who's rushing, who's dropping into coverage. Only three guys actually show that they wanted to rush the court. You drop eight in coverage, Drew Brees cannot force the ball down the field when eight guys are defending the pass. 
Vikings. A promising beginning with 21 yard pass to Colston, a 17 yard completion to Colston. That ends up with the Morstead punt. Here comes Cribs from the 10 for Cleveland. Roby tripped him up initially. A 16 yard return on a 56 yard punt. Timeout. Flag is down. Flag. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. And by the all-new Volkswagen Jetta. It's great for the price of good. That's Das Auto. Back in New Orleans, there was a flank thrown on the play. Courtney Roby ran out of bounds. They charge him with a 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty, but our delay now is a little bit more serious. There is an official who is down on the sideline. The cart and stretcher have come out, I think, about as fast as I have ever seen this equipment hit an NFL stadium. And you can see they are in a pretty severe situation. So as they attend I cannot tell you right now as we're ourselves trying to make heads and tails of what has happened cannot tell you what official is down but they are and you can see the reaction of the players they are performing the needed requirements on the sideline and with this injury to an official we will take a timeout eight and a half minutes to play in the third quarter from the Louisiana Superdome We're back in New Orleans. It was not an official, as we've looked at a couple replays up here in the booth, it was not an official who went down. It was a member of the chain gang. You'll watch it here. Roby went out of bounds. Yeah, Roby's going to run into a member of the chain gang, and he's pushed. And they penalize him for not coming back in bounds, but there's the collision there. And that's, he's being treated right now, and he fell back. We don't want to speculate as to what that injury could be, but as you can see it right there, there is the collision with the member of the chain gang. It's Courtney Roby was flagged for not coming back into the field to play immediately. Now, I do believe he had been pushed. It appeared as though some of the Cleveland Brown defenders who were trying to keep him from going down the field had pushed him out of bounds. That's where he ran into the member of the chain gang, and there was deep concern for his well-being here at the New Orleans Superdome. Member of the chain gang is down on the sideline and the New Orleans side you can see the, the man holding the IV and there was a penalty on Roby for leaving the field of play then coming back in he eventually made the tackle. And that penalty will move the ball from the 26 yard line up to the 41. But obviously, our concern and thoughts are to the gentleman who's down and being assisted to here in Louisiana. We take another timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by ATT. Rethink possible. And by Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. We're back in New Orleans. A uh, member of the chain gang, as you can see right there, being hoisted up onto the cart. The medical staff, which was on the field probably within about 20 seconds, with the stretcher, with all the medical equipment they could muster. Roby, when you can see... The gentleman blinking. But he was holding one of the measurement sticks on the sideline and Roby who was on the punt team going downfield ran out of bounds rammed into him. And they take him off as you can see we do not have a name for you by the way and until we are positive we will not give you. The, the man is talking to him as they take him off the field. And here's Courtney Roby. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. And once he's pushed out, that's where the collision takes place right there. And there is the collision. And 
going to be very unfortunate right down there at the bottom of your screen and that's where the injury occur not so sure that Roby saw him as he was pushed out of bounds you know, it's almost like at these NFL stadiums now there are there are hospitals within the stadium the, the care that players and people on the sideline receive is incredible mandated by the NFL every stadium has an x-ray area so he is getting the very best of con of concern and treatment right now when we get any word you will get word. so the penalty push it to the 41 Hillis in the backfield Colt McCoy the quarterback first down and ten Blocked by Yates that is a completion caught by Benjamin Watson the expatriate and he is to the 42 yard line his first catch today 17 yard pickup first down it was young with the tackle now watch the hit Usama young but he's going to go low remember we talked about changing the aiming point now right there that could have been a very bad injury for Ben Watson look at that he goes Watson says something to him I'm sure Watson doesn't like him going for the legs but that that's going to be I think an unintended circumstances for lowering the aiming point First and ten, here comes Adele, and Vickers wasn't even paying attention to the pass. He was on the sideline, and over there, Roman Hart is covering. It'll be second down and ten. And now, as you take a look at Colt McCoy, take a look at the Cleveland Browns. Can Colt McCoy deliver a win against the defending Super Bowl champions on the road? I think it's well within reach, obviously, with a 17-point lead midway through the third quarter. But something tells me they're going to need more. They're going to need more points on the board to secure a win. Second and 10 handoff to Hillis. And just a little dive down to about the 38-yard line. A lot of guys down there, including Jimmy Wilkerson, on a gain of three to the 39. Yeah, the big question was, could McCoy carry over what he put together last week in Pittsburgh? 9 of 15 so far. We've seen some passes dropped by Vickers out in the flat. But look at it. He has a command in the huddle. That's what the veterans have all told us when we met with him. He said, you know, he doesn't have to act the part. He is the part. Three of five on third down pass. They were good on three. It's a Incomplete Fighting over the head of his receivers downfield. McCoy a little bit high. Pressure in his face. Robinson was there. And they're going to blitz Sharper. Watch Sharper coming off in the face of the quarterback. They flip him. The ball sails high over the intended receiver over his head, Brian Robisky. So the McCoy, he had to throw that one a little bit high to get it to his receiver, but it was well high where no one could have made the catch. Hodges will punt here. Remember the last one was down inside the 10 of New Orleans at the 7. He had four of them like that last week against Pittsburgh. He has been terrific. Moore will fair catch this one at the 11. 27-yard punt. Well placed again. So Drew Brees, those are his numbers. Back out there. Drew Brees has thrown three interceptions today. He's been sacked three times. We should note that the Saints came back from a big deficit last season at Miami from 21 down to beat the Dolphins. They're more than capable of doing that, but as time whittles off the clock, they're going to need big plays and quick scoring strikes to regain the lead. This is Ivory on first down and 10. And they had Gokong over there, which was uh, plugging up the gap. It's a 3 to the 13. And Drew Brees has been perplexed by this Rob Ryan defense. Sacks galore. They've been able to get to him three times, and then another three interceptions in the first half. One being returned for a touchdown by David Bowens. I asked him about the three interceptions he threw two weeks ago in the loss to Arizona. He said it was luck. Today, the three interceptions in the first half is by design, by way of Rob Ryan's defense creating and wreaking havoc for Drew Brees. With a couple tight ends, second down and seven. David Thomas makes the grab there for Gina. Long with Barton make the stop. Gain is seven on the play. He'll spot the ball at about the 22. Should be good enough for a first down. And to put that in proper context, when Drew Brees said it was luck, not that he didn't want to give the Arizona Cardinals some credit. He just felt like, hey, it's really about what I do. And, you know, he said some balls were tipped. And we saw even uh, the pass or the interception that was tipped and returned for a touchdown. He said, things are going to happen. He said, but I have to maintain my composure and continue to trust what I do. 
brief is the tackle eligible. First down and 10. Giving him good protection. That's the rookie with the catch, the tight end, Graham. Who is belted on the near side by Ward, another rookie. That's an 11-yard gain out to the 32 and a first down. What did Drew Brees tell us? He says, look, I focus on the process. I'm studying film. I'm going to follow the game plan. I'm going to study my opponent. He said, but in games, I don't think I react. Nice pass reacting to the seven route ran by the tight end, Jimmy Graham. He says, hey, I see, I feel, I trust, and I react on game day. Street number 64 is still in. Ivory comes in, first and 10. Ivory picks with the lead block. Locked down by Antaba Rubin. That is a gain of four, and he's up to the 37-yard line. When you have a quarterback like Brees, who is such a leader, and his work ethic rubs off on others, I mean, that's, you can see a Super Bowl coming down the road. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And then I think it's a really good blend of an aggressive play caller like Sean Payton, and then an aggressive signal caller with Drew Brees. I think the two have blended together to make for a wonderful pair. You take a, a general manager like Mickey Loomis, who is going out and mining and scouting the colleges for talent to put around the coach quarterback. You have something special. But now you have to execute on Sundays to turn it into wins. Rounds in the nickel on this second down and six. And Brees has had a catch by Post in the sixth of the day. And a tackle made outside by Hayden. Gain of seven on second and six. They'll move the chains again. They got a first down to the 44. And I like the fact that they're taking their time. Yes, they're going no huddle, but they're not going hurry up offense. Drew Brees is collective and calm, knows where his receivers are as he dumps it off to Marcus Costa. And now they're going to go into the huddle, walk back up to the line of scrimmage. They're going to make every play count. That's how you get back into rhythm. But look at the pass distribution. Nine caught by the receiver, six by tight ends, another five by the running backs. He's spread it around. First and ten. Devery Henderson, Fujita read it well. It's like he knew what the play was. Well, he was out there quickly. I thought Henderson should have stayed outside the numbers. Even though he came back to the ball immediately, you've got to press back outside the numbers. See, watch how he comes back in to catch the ball. Now he drifts inside way too far make that tackle very easy for Scott Fujita. But Fujita is such a leader. Here's a guy that gave a quarter of his Super Bowl check to one of the relief programs as this era continues to recover from Hurricane Katrina. What a great guy. What a great teammate. So with the loss of three, second down and 13. That's in the backfield. Wide open. Robert Meacham. A stop and go right there and finally hit and brought down by Sheldon Brown at the 30-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Longest pass play today of 29 yards. For the good quarterback, sooner or later, now look at the pressure. You bring four, and sooner or later they figure it out, and they start to find receivers open down the field. Drew Brees not busy watching the pass rush. He's got his vision down the field. They drop coverage. T.J. Ward sits on it, and so they're able to get to the second level to Robert Meacham. Ran a good route, good read by Drew Brees. Still the nickel secondary for the Cleveland Browns. It's first and ten. Brees has hit his last ten consecutive passes. Pressure here. And Gokong with a good read on Betts. Eight of a yard to the 29. And Wednesday on CBS. With the prosecution, fights dirty. The difference is the defenders. They fight right back. Jim Belushi and... Jerry O'Connell star. That's Wednesday only on CBS. Kevin, as we move closer to the fourth quarter of this ball game, I think it's going to be important for Drew Brees to lead his team to a touchdown on this possession. Not a field goal, but a touchdown. Now, in speaking for the Cleveland Browns defensively, boy, you can sap their momentum by getting the ball back here. Six in the Cleveland secondary on the second down and nine. Ivory. Push ride with the pulling block. Fujita was right there with Gokong. It's a gain of three. And they'll spot the ball at the 26. So difficult to move the ball 90 plus yards. The more times defensive coordinators tell their group, the more time we can keep them snapping the football, the, the more it's in our favor for something bad to happen for the offense. Nine plays on this drive so far, 63 yards. They started what inside of their own 10 yard line and Cleveland Browns, if you can just make them keep snapping the ball, something good is going to break for this defense. Let's see if Drew Brees and his offense can avoid 
avoid the crucial mistake. Third down and six. Stinchcomb with the block. Colston does not get the first down because of the tackle by Wright. It's a five-yard gain. In fact, the ball was loose. There was no whistle blown. Browns think they've gotten it. Three turnovers already today by the Saints. It'll be fourth down. New Orleans holds on. Colston digging it out. Bowen's over there with a the stop. Nearly the crucial mistake that we talked about because I thought Colston was a little bit nonchalant. Know where the first down marker is. But then you got to oh. secure the football right there. Yeah, right. See, he's trying to get up off the ground before getting the ball back. Go this ahead and secure the football priority number one. So they had catches of 29 yards by Meacham on this drive. The tight end Graham had one for 11. It's going to set up a 42 yard field goal try by Garrett Hartley. And a challenge flag has been thrown by Eric Mangini. The slimmed down Eric Mangini. Yeah, we talked to him about the weight loss. I saw him <laughs> in the gym morning before the game. <laughs> the quarter has ended, as you can see by the zeros on the clock. Cleveland is challenging, ruling on the field that the runner was down by contact. So Colston, who has been the main target with seven receptions today, the knee is down, he's got the ball, and then it was off the knee of the tackler right. Oh, the knee was down. Yes. The and ball, it was, and the dead. ball came out when it hit the knee of right, but his knee clearly, from that angle, his knee was down. See, he's got, there's contact, and then there's the knee. Oh. It was down before the ball came out. You can take another look at it, but as soon as the knee makes contact with the ground, that's when he has to be considered legally down by contact. I think I need one more look. Okay. Right knee down. Boom. Right knee down. Ball yep. is still secure. You've got a good, good replay by our crew here in New Orleans. No time remains on the third quarter clock as we continue to wait word on the injured chain gang member who was hit inadvertently by Courtney Roby on a punt and he ran out of bounds hit the gentleman holding one of the sticks and they quickly administered all they needed to on the sideline he has been taken to the locker room for x-rays and like i said when we get word you will have it just as soon look at eric mangini one in five mike holmgren comes in as the new president for the cleveland browns and they finished last season strong winning their last four consecutive games that was part of the process Holmgren took into consideration to retain Mangini for a second year. The key is, though, you bring in three new quarterbacks, not one, not two. Gone is Brady Quinn. Gone is Derek Anderson. In comes Seneca Wallace, Jake DeLong, Colt McCoy. All three quarterbacks are the new play to the system. It's not reviewable. We ruled that the runner fumbled and then recovered the ball. You cannot review the recovery in the field of play. That is the end of the third quarter. That is the senior referee in the NFL, Walt Coleman. We go to the fourth quarter with the Cleveland Browns leading the defending champion, New Orleans Saints. We're going to begin the fourth quarter with the Cleveland Browns leading the New Orleans Saints 20 to 3. Special teams have played a huge part of this Cleveland lead, as have the turnovers of Drew Brees. He's thrown three interceptions. He's also been sacked three times. And right now, we are under a secondary review, which should have been <laughs> the first, <laughs> the, yeah. in, the initial review. <laughs> Initially, they told us that they were going to review if the runner, in this case, Marcus Colston, was down by contact. Then they came back and said, oh, you know what? It's not reviewable, the change of possession as to who the ball was recovered by. Well, I didn't think they were looking at that to begin with. We were reviewing the down by contact rule, and now they've made another announcement. They've gone back under. Paul Coleman has made his decision, and he is on the sideline, and he is going to After reviewing to the play, the runner's right knee was down with the ball in his possession. 
We will respot the ball at the 21 yard line. It'll be fourth and one for New Orleans, and they will not be charged a timeout. Clearly down was the knee. Ball was coughed up afterwards. And New Orleans has taken their field goal unit off the field, obviously. They've got it fourth and a couple. It was fourth and seven. Now they've got it fourth and about two. And they're going to go for it. So that changes things dramatically as we start this fourth quarter. We'll call it fourth and one. They respotted the ball at the 21 yard line. That's a big play. That's, that's a big uh, change right there. A real big change. Because now the New Orleans Saints, what you're going to go for. You have to. We talked about them having to get points on the board out of this possession. Not a field goal, but a touchdown. Ivory in the backfield, fourth and one. Easily slicing for the first down. Brought down by TJ Ward. Put him at the 13 yard line. A burst of eight. Wonderful play. What did Sean Payton tell us? Everything starts with his offensive line. The ability to power and run right at this Cleveland Brown defense. This is a statement. This is a testament as to who this football team feel they are. Running behind that offensive line with Chris Ivory to create a new set of downs. Now they sense an opportunity to score a touchdown. That's just come in. First and ten. A little bit low, but scooped up by Moore. Makes the grab at the nine. They had Wright and they had Roth over there with the coverage. And incomplete is what they rule. Incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Will be second down. This ball's thrown right at the feet of Lance Moore. You see that ball skip right off the carpet. And they're going to call it an incomplete pass. And so if you're Drew Brees, what do you do? Second and ten. Take a chance to get. This is where they like to run a lot of screen and picks. We then have to score a touchdown from last week. And look at there's no place to go yeah, right there. there. And a Taba Rubin wraps him up after a two yard gain to the 11. Wasted play, in my, in my opinion. We try to pound it with heat. There's no lead back. And Rob Ryan says, okay, now we got third down situation. You got to ask yourself, though, if you're Sean Payton, is this two down territory? Do you go for it? On third and fourth down, if you don't get it on third, do you still go for a touchdown? But they like to run a lot of screen and picks to that third inside wide receiver, trying to rub off the defender and have him come free. Seven defensive backs on this third and eight. Yeah. Underneath, Thomas, touchdown. Side receiver tried to run a screen to the other side of the field. I watch him coming across here. They're going to knock him down. He gets back and come out and uncovers himself. That's just good, smart route running. He gets knocked off his feet and arrows back out to the open area. They want to go to that third inside receiver, Dave Thomas, and found him for a touchdown. Looked like maybe Fujita was in on the coverage. On the 11 uh, yard touchdown reception by Thomas. Extra point here now by Hart. And it's a 10 point game. With 13 29 to play. Breeze with his first touchdown pass this afternoon. Longest touchdown drive this season by the Saints. And Thomas dives in for six. Well, it took him a while, but they got it in eight and a half minutes, 89 yards. The touchdown pass to Thomas brings the game a little bit closer as Breeze and that brain trust over there looking at some of the pictures. And that's Sean Payton, who is in the middle of that scrum. The ensuing kickoff now by the New Orleans Saints. Special teams have been a big deal for Cleveland today. They picked off Breeze three times. And here comes Cribs, two yards deep. 
Nice play. Turned in by Lee Torres. Some shoving after the play. Remember, there was a touchdown pass thrown by Breeze that was negated with offsetting penalties earlier in the game. Here comes McCoy, his lead chopped to 10. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Geico, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Direct TV. Watch your favorite team wherever you live. Only on Direct TV. Call to switch today. And by the all new CRZ Sport Hybrid. Only from Honda. That's the river walk along the Mississippi River on this beautiful Sunday in New Orleans. The crowd is alive. They just scored a touchdown in an eight minute drive. We're back in business. And here come the Browns with a rookie quarterback from the 19, first and 10. Hillis. There's a lead block by the tight end Watson. Very little room to roam. He picks up threes to the 22. And a reminder on Tuesday, she had a beautiful mind, but it's her body language that will solve this case. Don't miss TV's number one drama, NCIS. Tuesday only on CBS. We do have the name of the gentleman, by the way, that was injured on the sideline, Al Nastasi. He's been taken to a local hospital. And again, when we receive word, we will pass it along. Second down and seven from the 22. Hillis again. Lead blocked by Vickers. Tackle made initially by Anthony Hargrove. Very little room there. Being a two on the play to the 24. And now they force Hope McCoy to have to throw the football. And this is where the New Orleans Saints defense was so good one year ago. As you take a look at the quarterback comparison, only 39 yards passing so far for Colt McCoy. Through the first six games last year, 18 interceptions, but without Darren Sharper, only nine takeaways through their first six games. Colt McCoy says, with Darren Sharper in the game, I cannot allow him to read my eyes. Let's see what we get on the third down play. Third and five into the nickel. Oh, almost picked off. That's a live ball. That is Chancey Stucky up and running. They down him at the 36. He bounced back up, vaults back up. 12-yard catch and run. And a first down and a flag is thrown across the way at the 35. Now watch Sharper reading the eyes of the young quarterback. Break, flash in front. What Was he catch. down by contact? Illegal I would say yes. Hands, hands in the face. Defense, that penalty's declined. Play results in a first down. Wow. That was by Sharper. Hand to the face. And one would have to ask is, was Stucky down by contact? There was a slight collision there. And Sharper was going to the, going exactly where the intercept point was to get to the ball, but he's got to make the play there. See, there's, that's contact right there. One has to argue, is he down by contact? And if so, then he's short of the first down marker. Challenge flag has been thrown by Sean Payton, the coach of the New Orleans Saints. And rightfully so. And I don't know about the hands to the face. Wasn't he going for the ball? That's one of those you know, hairs that are maybe too small to try to split it. But certainly, Stucky went down after there was a slight collision. And he would have to be ruled down by contact. See, there you go. He's going for the ball. There's contact the with foot. The, the feet were tangled up. He goes down. The ball should be marked back short of the first down mark. It was third and five. New Orleans is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner was down by contact several yards behind the spot. We have 11.49 to play in the fourth. As we return to the New Orleans Superdome, here's what the challenge is. Was he down by contact? I say yes. You could see the clip where the feet get tangled up and you can see he's down well short of that first down mark was Chancey Stucky. I'm, I don't like the penalty to begin with Kevin where they said that sharper hand hit the face mask of Chancey Stucky. After reviewing the play the runner was down by contact at the 27 yard line. Illegal 
hands to the face. Number 27 on the defense. That penalty will now be accepted. Exactly. Five yards from the previous before. spot and an automatic first down. They declined it before when they thought the guy had gotten the first down. So now they accept it. And that is certainly part of the replay process. You yeah. can go back and accept as a part of it. Now, he said that the initial penalty was on number 27. That would be on Malcolm Jenkins and not on Darren Sharper. Hand to the face penalty. So any way you look at it, it's going to be the Cleveland Browns ball. They're going to be just short. Actually, it's going first to down. be a first, a first down, down for them. Yes. Yeah, they're going to mark it as a first down with the penalty, even though they're going to give them the ball at the 28 yard line. And New Orleans does not lose a timeout because they won the challenge, but the penalty made it moot. So here comes McCoy. And we'll have it first down and 10. You always hate to see a quarterback manages the game well, but so far that's what McCoy has done. Well, he's had a lot of help from the defense, a lot of help from the special teams, but now he's got to manufacture some yards and big plays. Goes on first and 10. Oh, and he's breaking tackles and running close to a first down. Roman Harper is the one to finally get him along in the secondary with Jenkins on a gain of nine. And Remy A. Dale had him initially in the backfield. He's going to get penetration. Watch big number 92. Look as he comes out. He got him there, but he can't wrap up the big, strong running back, Peyton Hillis. He's stepping out of tackles and churning out the yards and pressing towards that first down mark. Couple tight ends on second down and one. Hillis again drives the first to the 40. Gain of two. They told us, as we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, they had to run the ball to find some success today. Well, it, it, I think it was Eric Mangini said that if we're busy running the ball, then we keep the ball out of the hands of Drew Brees. And, and that's no more important than here in the fourth quarter, whittling time off the clock. And the way that you manage your offense and manage a young quarterback, you got to give him a running game. And, and the one thing that Drew Brees needs, he needs time. And he's running out of it here in the fourth quarter. First and ten. Hillis, Vickers a block, and a big hole. And a first down to the 48-yard line and knocked out of bounds by Usama Young. That's a 12-yard gain on the heels of a 9-yard gain moments ago. Well, they're starting to do what we talked about. We met with them. Watch how they're going to seal it here and then get a kick out with Vickers. So you seal the edge and then a kick out on Roman Harper. That creates a running lane for Hillis. Look at the great block. Excellent timing between the kick out block by Vickers and then Hillis is able to hit the hole and come downhill. Five straight runs. Five straight runs, 28 yards on this drive. Peyton Hillis is starting to heat it up. Two tights on first down and Hillis again to the fray. Down by Will Smith on a gain of three. Mark him close to the 45 yard line. You can build your own football dynasty and compete year round with CBSSports.com's franchise football. Find out more at CBSSports.com slash franchise. Last three games, the New Orleans Saints run defense had drastically improved. They had only given up an average of 67 rush yards per game over the last three games. And you can see week five and week six, and you can see what happened today. And they're giving up chunks of yards. Bell is in second down and seven. Cut. Philmont is the one to make the initial touch. Gain of a yard to the 44. I think. Cleveland's smart though. They they understand that you can come out and run the football as we get closer to the below eight minutes remaining in the ball game. Seven straight rushing attempts on this drive by the Cleveland Browns. They know they have to run the ball to get time off the clock, but the fact that they're able to do it successfully to Eric Mangini. Brian Dable understand the formula for winning a football game against the defending Super Bowl champion. McCoy for one of the rare times today in the shotgun on this five minute drive. It's third down and six. Right to Hillis. He throws to the quarterback. McCoy, it's a first down. What a game plan put together today. Sharper makes the stop. 
13 yard catch and run. Dable, you just talked about him with the great play. We have seen more plays like that by Cleveland in all facets of their game. First down to the 32. Hey, you got to put on all the stops. Hillis has a nice throw here. Cole McCoy catches it. He wants to cut back, but he see three Saints defenders, but yet he doesn't want to run out of bounds either and stop the clock. <laughs> so right. he said, what should I do to get out of harm's way? How about the rookie quarterback? First down, timeout, New Orleans. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by Acura. The most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. Well, they barbecue in some stadium areas, and here they uh, smoke oysters. And the seafood, by the way, folks, out of this area is as fresh as you'll find any place in the world. As is the game plan of the Cleveland Browns. I got to tell you, they have outcoached Mangini and Steph so far have outcoached the coach of the year from a season ago. They are as good as those grilled oysters <laughs> you just showed. Very creative in creating the formula for big plays. For the New Orleans timeout, first down and 10. McCoy just got a 13-yard pass from that guy who's carrying the ball right there. Hillis. Getting stuck on his way for a first down. Oh, are they fired up now? They have captured this game by the throat, and they are squeezing a 12-yard pickup by Hillis, knocked out of bounds by Joan Dunbar at the 20. And look at this, the kick out block and then downhill. See, they get the seal and getting to the edge. He may be the perfect guy to be the closer for this Cleveland Brown offense. They've had three games where they had the lead in the fourth quarter and have lost them earlier this year. But this one, boy, look at the yards by quarter. 43 of his total rushing yards have come in the final frame. On this drive alone, Hillis has had two carries of 12, one carry of nine. It is a first down right here. Hurdling the defender and brought down with a nice tackle made by Will Smith and a loss of five. Back to the 24. Can we go back? They've had three goal to go situations today. The Cleveland Browns, they did score a touchdown, but they had to settle the other two times for field goals. Yeah. McCoy was hoping it wouldn't come back to haunt him. And any kind of points would be good here because on this drive, they turned out some incredible yards but look at the time of possession on this drive playing keep away from Sean Payton and Drew Brees has been paramount and just as important as getting points you put points on the board on a one play big play moment I think it'd be better to get those points if you had a 10 play drive and number 11 coming up right here Bell in the backfield second 15 he almost busted it free as he went outside cutting the edge it's a pickup of five on the play by Mike Bell. And he's to the 18 yard line. Tackle made by Roman Harper. Good tackle by Roman Harper, or he's going to be standing he's, in the end zone. Look at he's Drew getting a little Brees. fidgety, isn't he's he? He's huh? antsy. <laughs> he's saying, Are you kidding me? You're not going to get me the ball back? He's trying to stay loose, do anything he can, to make sure he's ready when they get the ball back. Seven minute drive by Cleveland. They're running out of time. Greg Williams in this defense, he knows it. We need to get a stop. We need a big play. Two tight ends with Bell. Third and ten. Bell again. No place to run there. Nice play. Turned in by Marvin Mitchell. He's a nickel linebacker in on that play. Throwing for a loss of six yards. Back to the 26. Marvin Mitchell is a veteran ball player. He's coming backside. Look at that. See, he doesn't lose contain. If he goes down too far inside, Bell's going to reverse it, and there's going to be no one to stop him. So smart heads-up play by Marvin Mitchell. So the field goal unit is on the field for the Cleveland Browns. The second timeout has been taken by the New Orleans Saints. So they have just one remaining. But the clock showing six minutes. And we've got a 10-point Cleveland Brown lead. Tonight on 60 Minutes, how did a TV show about guys and cars and laughs become one of the most popular shows on the planet? Find out tonight on the award-winning 60 Minutes, and it's only on CBS. John Payton and Drew Brees have conferred, and now they will try to plot the course with under six to play once this field goal is attempted by Dawson. It's a 44-yard try. And a big one. And he's got it. It's a oh, flag has been thrown at the 27. 
That was a 43-yard field. Ball start, 65. Ooh. Offense, five-yard penalty, field fourth down. Which now becomes a 48-yard try, and that was on the veteran Eric Steinbach out of Iowa. Yeah, there was some movement. Even the Saints players were pointing, <laughs> taking a look at him all the way around. Take a look. There you see the movement at the bottom of the screen. Dawson's longest field goal this season was last week, 39 yards. This will be a 49 yarder. 49 yard. They've given him almost an extra half yard here. And that is good. A huge 49 yard field goal by Dawson, which extends the lead to 13 over the world champion Saints. With 5.55 to play. And the first man to say thank you to Dawson was Eric Steinbach. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, now we got Breeze. You know, there's a lot on his mind right now as we talk about coming up next. Tom Brady leading the Patriots out west. He'll take on Phillip Rivers and the San Diego Chargers. Some of you will see the Raiders tackle the Broncos. Check local listings for the game in time in your area. Well, this has got to be one of the biggest stories today in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. There's no the way that Cleveland Browns came out and jumped on Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints mixing up big time plays on special teams and very creative play calling by their offense coordinator Brian Dable and then the way they were able to turn the ball over and intercept Drew Brees three times in the first half. And so it's been a good mix of creative play calling on offense the defense and Rob Ryan and then of course the special teams plays that have helped them to get a lead and put a lot of pressure on Drew Brees on this possession. On that last drive, and again, it's worth noting, is Dawson, who just kicked now officially a 48-yard field goal, and Roby awaits this kickoff. The quarterback, McCoy, caught a 13-yard pass, and Hillis had runs of 9, 12, and 12 yards, which set up the 49-yarder and the 13-point lead and the ensuing kickoff to Roby. We'll leave it there. His third touchback today. Dawson has had a very good day. You tack on that 49-yard field goal. You talk about the three touchbacks, and he has fulfilled what he needed to do here in the Dome. And remember, it was Sean Payton who talked to us more about a complimentary style of play for your football team, but we've gotten that from Eric Mangini's football team, from the Cleveland Browns, complimenting in terms of having a rookie quarterback but having special teams, defense, creative play calling come together. And now Sean Payton studying that play call sheet to figure out what he can dial up against Mangini's Cleveland Browns to put more points on the board with about six minutes to go in the game. Browns defensively will have six defensive backs on the field and from the 20 yard line Breeze who's thrown three interceptions today first down and ten. Here they come Rodgers right in his grill. What a nice play by the defensive lineman, a long-time veteran with a big-time play. 350 pounds, but the boy can push the pocket. Look at 92. He's coming. No oh. one. He lands on Drew Brees. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Drew Brees is like, are you kidding me? This guy's too big to land on anyone. Drew became a father for a second time. He and his wife uh, welcomed Bowen into the world earlier this week. Second down and ten. Six defensive backs. Brees. Betts. Tackle made by Bernard. Catch and run to the 36. 16 yard game. Need to make plays in quick order. Betts coming out of the backfield. Slips under Bernard. Bernard cannot allow Betts to get underneath. No protection from that route once he clears you. First and ten. All time there. A good looking catch by the Pro Bowler. Shockey. He's a good one. 19 yard catch all the way to the 45 of the Cleveland Browns. Yards starting to come by the chunks with Drew Brees in this offense. They're working right now over the middle of the field. First and 10. Oops. That wasn't looking. Wright was coming in. It'll be second and 10. Right on that touchdown pass that Breeze threw earlier in the game was covering Lance Moore, but offsetting penalties negated that. Wright has had a big play and a punt return when Cribs threw from one sideline to the other, and then Wright raced down the sideline, but 69 yards. 
Look for Colston or Lance Moore over the middle of the field. Both guys are very good working the seam areas of the defense. Schaefering is on the line. He'll be the only down line. A lot of linebackers and sits in the secondary on their second down and ten. Outside Meacham. Shoved out of bounds by Sheldon Brown. Breeze wishes he had this to do over again because he did have Colston on the crossing route. But he felt the pressure was coming and then he had to take a step back so he didn't have the trigger ready to pull. Forced to throw it to the outside but Colston did come open over the middle of the field. Two yard gain to the 43. Third and eight. Rob Ryan's done a nice job calling the defense today. Excellent job. And Trying to confuse the quarterback. Have a good looking catch. Colston, 40, shy of the five by four. Picks up five right there. Hit on the play by Roth, so it will be fourth down and about three. Saints have one timeout. Cleveland's got three, and that clock continues to tick. Critical fourth down. They're going to have to get the play called, get out of the exactly. huddle, and get it snapped. More importantly, they have to execute on the play. It could be game over if they can't convert. And they do with more. Gain of four. When they needed three to the 34. One time out for the Saints. Clock is rolling. Well, we told you that Lance Moore was a wonderful safety blanket for Drew Brees when he needs someone to make a play. Moore is at four catches on third downs today. Here's Brees going. For Meacham, the coverage by the rookie Hayden and Ward was coming over from the safety. Yeah, Meacham slowed down. He didn't know the ball was coming and hesitated, and that's what threw the playoff rhythm. If he keeps running, he's going to make a catch right around the five yard line. And Drew Brees got to be able to trust this receiver, see the pump fake, and then he throws it, and it appears as though Meacham is overthrown. But watch Meacham at the bottom of the screen. See, he let up. All he had to do was keep running. He would have made a wonderful catch in a big play for his football team. Second and ten. Oh, that's intercepted. It's the fourth in the second by Bowen. Breaking a tackle. He's got an entourage, and folks, he is gone. And that is the dagger. 65 yards, his second touchdown today. 12-year veteran David Bowens picked off Breeze in the first half. Picks him off in the second half and has just sealed a win for the Cleveland Browns over the defending Super Bowl champion Saints. It Holy is. smokes. It's a shocker. And watch Bowen. He comes from way over on the other side. And that's why Drew Brees never saw him coming. He had him accounted for the left side of the protection. He comes clears across the formation right into the throwing lane of Drew Brees. When you have veteran ball players, the ability to disguise the pre-snap read for the quarterback and then get into position to make a play is very critical. At that time, David Bowden was able to fool Drew Brees. Dawson, it's 30 to 10 with three and a half to play in the game. He had two touchdowns in the first 11 years of his career. He's got two today off of Brees. Look yeah. at that. He, he <laughs> lined up initially as if he was going to rush. And the left guard, Carl Nix, was waiting for him, but he never, he never penetrated the line of scrimmage. All he did was slide across the line in coverage. And Rob Ryan has to be very happy for the way this defense has responded. <laughs> he he has knows done a terrific job. Yeah, he knows he has stopped one of the best offenses in the National Football League. That was the offensive coordinator there. That ball hit a guy, Dable, coming over to congratulate. Rob Ryan, whose brother, of course, is the celebrated coach of the Jets, Rex Ryan, and both are the sons of Buddy Ryan, the famous defensive coach with that Chicago 46 defense back in 1985, later a Philadelphia Eagles head coach by virtue of that Super Bowl with Ditka and the uh, Chicago Bears back in the mid-80s. Breeze has thrown Solomon four interceptions today, tying a career high. It's the third time that Drew Breeze this season has had an interception return for a touchdown uh, beyond belief. 
Well, it, it's, it, it is beyond <laughs> belief. When you talk about it, remember at the top, we said that no quarterback has played better than Drew Brees over the last four and a half years since he has joined the New Orleans Saints. No one has thrown for more yards. No one has thrown for more touchdown passes. And I think except for Peyton Manning, maybe one more touchdown pass than Drew Brees since he has joined the New Orleans Saints. So, yes, this is very surprising. Will be from about the three for the New Orleans Saints. Streif gave a block and then Roby lost his footing and then was belted on the play and taken down by Titus Brown. 21 yard return with a little gray in that beard. David Bowens has personally outscored the New Orleans Saints today. This is the number eight offense coming in and that high powered offense that steered them to the Super Bowl last season with a 13 and 0 start. It looks like the Saints are going to drop to four and three to start this season. Yeah, Bowen's a 12 year veteran of the National Football League so he knows how to implement and execute the game plan put on the board by Rob Ryan. Six defensive backs here in first and ten for Breeze. He'll just keep firing away which he does. That's Devery Henderson run down by Elam. 23 yard pickup. They'll move the ball out to the 47. Again operating with one timeout. Breeze in the Saints offense. You know the New Orleans Saints they don't see a lot of three four defenses. They played a few in the preseason try to get warmed up but this was an entirely different look presented by the Cleveland Brown. And Breeze just having a hard time finding anybody. Finally it's Betts across the way. No gain on the play. Coverage by Fujita. The ball stays at the 46 yard line. The pressure has been up there most of the day. He's been sacked three times and you can see the interception number right there. It's an incredible number as Drew Brees doesn't make a lot of mistakes but I think by way of the defense the confusion and the complexity of their alignment their many drops on the back end has caused some tremendous problems for even an experienced and elite quarterback like Drew Brees. Second down and ten for Brees. He's going to be pitched by Colston. Hit by Ryan. Keeps his footing. Finally it's Adams who snares him at about the 29, 24 yard catch. In this 20 point Cleveland lead. You see the clock. What can you say about the coaching of the Cleveland Browns? Phenomenal. I mean, it's just, just been phenomenal from special teams coach Brad Seeley. The offense coordinator Brian Dayball and his ability to design some trick plays just enough to keep the Saints defense off balance and we talked enough about Rob Ryan coaching matters in the National Football League and we know that Sean Payton and his staff are a very good coaching staff and a very good group having won a Super Bowl over one year ago but each and every week it's a new Super Bowl champion today. Fourth and five they got to get to the 19 that's exactly what Moore does and wisely gets out of bounds and 208 to play in the game. That's a catch and run of eight and Roth ushers him out of play at the 16 of the Cleveland Browns. Hey, Drew Brees has no quit any does he? No. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. And he's still making plays. He had some wonderful things to say about Colt McCoy. Yes, did he? he did. Well there are a lot. They're both Texans as we talked about before. Brees actually had an uncle who played quarterback at Texas. Thus he got to know McCoy when they were in Austin. Colt McCoy says he'll text Drew Brees. He said he felt it was an honor to be on the same field with Drew Brees today. Mr. Ted Graham ushered out of bounds there by Mike Adams. Graham's had a nice day and one catch for the rookie tight end coming in. Picks up three right there. And Graham on the afternoon now with four receptions. The two minute warning and the Browns on top. You've got the two leading rushers for the Cleveland Browns today <laughs> on the right Hillis who's got 69 yards and uh, he's boasting because he's just outdone Hodges who had a fake punt he ran 68 yards and uh, those are two major parts of the Cleveland story today. Yeah Peyton Hill is 69 yards rushing today he had 69 yards a combined total of his last two ball games so we said he needed to step up and he stepped up in the final frame hoping to close out this game like the real good running backs do. Two minute warning second down and seven. Big hit on Moore. Elam was there gain of five and they don't call it a completion wiped away incomplete pass. So it'll be third down and seven. Drew Brees, he told you he's going to keep firing it. Lance Moore is a guy he wants to fire it too. Abram Elam knows it. 
Breeze has thrown the ball 54 times today. Yeah, not a good number. I, I think anytime you start throwing it 50 more times, you tend to throw the ball to the opponent more times than you want. Hard just about had him there. There's some pretty good coverage on Thomas. Linebacker Scott Fujita, who has had a terrific game today along with Bowens. Linebackers have taken hold of this game defensively for the Cleveland Browns. Nice homecoming for Scott Fujita. Had a sack, had an interception. His linebackers, and of course, Bowens had two picks, returned both of them for touchdowns. Veteran group in that linebacking core Scott Fujita, Chris Gokong, David Bowens. <laughs> Some excellent playmakers on that side of the ball. Very smart football player. He's still huffing after that long 64 <laughs> yard <laughs> yes, interception return. Fourth and seven. Caught by Moore. Flag has been thrown. Game to the seven. It would not be enough for a first down. Had to get to the six. They've marked him at the seven. See what the flag's all about on that gain of six. Holding 21 defense. Oh, Five-yard penalty yep. automatic first down. That's on Eric Wright. John Payton wondered, do you have a 20-point play mm. on that scorecard? Because you know, he's going to keep dialing them up. He's going to continue to work it and press it. He's going to work these guys hard during the week. First and goal from the eight. Betts in the backfield. Good block by Bushrod. That's a touchdown to Colston. Beating Elam. Eight-yard touchdown pass by Drew Brees. And Kevin, that's the same play that we saw him run in practice on Friday. He overthrew Colston in the back of the end zone, and boy, was he hot in practice. And now he comes out, throws it over David Bowens, the linebacker at the second level. You have to wonder if the ball is even tipped, but he gets this one in, squeezes it in for a touchdown. 138 to play. Saints will have a timeout. And it will be 30 17 with the extra point by Hartman. So they chip a little bit at that Cleveland lead. And they have to play. Key plays today for the Browns. Creativity and execution on special teams on the trick play to throw back the cribs to Eric Wright sets up their first points of the day. Again, another creative trick play on special teams. Reggie Hodges takes that one, goes 68 yards in the throwback from Peyton Hillis over to Colt McCoy to create a new set of downs. So creativity from the coaches in terms of Eric Mangini. Special teams coach Brad Seeley, Brian Daybo, the offensive coordinator, drawing up some creative things that none better than Rob Ryan. And you draw up the kind of game that really can confuse a quarterback like Drew Brees. Now, that's really putting together a Rubik's Cube that no one can solve. Congratulations to a great job by the Cleveland Brown coaching staff. Now, Morstead, who usually kicks off, will be on the sideline, and Hartley, the field goal kicker, will be kicking on this particular play and so we expect a bounce and the onside kick and we'll see what happens. Quick turnaround and caught. Rubisky. So they put the guys with the hands up front. Rubisky one of them. And so the Cleveland Browns will take over at the 42 yard line and they'll have it first down and 10. I don't know on that kick you want to get that ball dribbling across the ground because you tend to get a nice little hop at the end of it. That ball never really got airborne off a hop. It went right into the hands of Robisky for an easy catch. It's funny they would have Hartley with that onside kick because it was Morstead who made that legendary onside kick in the Super Bowl. And they'll be in the victory formation here. There was a big win at the end of last season against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 13 to 6, when they sacked Roethlisberger eight times in Cleveland. That was a big win under Mangini. Where would you think this would rank on the road against the defending Super Bowl champions? Well, this is huge. And that one was huge because, remember, they won their last four games to close out the season, thought they could build on that, didn't necessarily carry over in the first month of the season. But if they can build on this win and grow in confidence in their ability to execute, 
and win maybe their next four or five games, go on a nice little win streak, then we'll be able to look back and say this was a watershed moment for this coaching staff and for the football players of the Cleveland Browns. Another knee taken by McCoy. What a wonderful day. For, and look at the Gatorade shower <laughs> on what was a terrific defensive game plan on Rob Ryan. There probably haven't been too many of those in his uh, much appreciated career. Scott Fujita, remember he was recruited by the New England Patriots and wanted to go play there for Rob Ryan. And then when the Cleveland Browns came knocking on the door of Fujita this past offseason, again, the chance to play for Ryan was one of the reasons why he was uh, drawn to Cleveland. Yeah, he, he loved this organization for a number of different reasons, loved the community. He felt it was a good fit for his family, for his wife and his children. But you're right, Rob Ryan, his ability to play for Coach Ryan ranked high in his priority list. And Fujita, he's a winner. He's a, he's a fine leader, fine young man. And Players like him, the Cleveland Browns can go far. How about Colt McCoy? He has come close with a nice performance in Pittsburgh, and he wins against a guy that he has idolized since he entered the University of Texas, Drew Brees. A lot of similarities between those two. A big upset, one of the biggest of the day in the National Football League. The Super Bowl champions have fallen. The Browns 30, the Saints 17. The Solomon Wilcott's Kevin Harlan saying so long.